Welcome, 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 everybody. Hello. Hello, hello. I'm Ja, and today I have Michiel with me. Hello, hello. Happy that you good guys Good afternoon, by. good evening, good night, good morning, wherever yeah, you are. From everybody <laughs> around the world, uh, we hope you're doing well in this uh, harsh times. Um, so, yeah, uh, and we were going to uh, talk about this uh, magnificent little beast in front of us. Uh, little beast? So, yeah. What, what's little about that's that? The, that's the pun. <laughs> There's nothing little about it. Um, so, yeah, what are we going to do today? Of course, I'll show you the ins and outs. Uh, all the little details about it uh, i'll get, get you know and familiar with the specs and features i will do some li live demonstrations because we have some nice and exciting stuff coming up with some uh smart gaming features and ai and all that goodies uh of course uh, at the end we also have some gameplay for you guys lined up which is also correlated with uh the demonstrations uh so uh later we will have uh Watch Dogs legion and also a csgo for you as the games to enjoy so welcome everybody and if you have any questions of course just drop them in the chat like usual uh we try our best to keep an eye out on the chat and pick up as many questions or uh, statements as we can uh, but sometimes uh, it goes really fast because you know we're not only on one platform well on uh, periscope uh, twitch uh, we're on facebook we're on youtube so as you can imagine uh, there's a lot of stuff coming in so i see that everybody is already quite uh, up to speed in the chat already yeah Good and usually see. we try to <laughs> to pick out the questions that are relevant for everyone so <clears throat> don't be offended if, if your question isn't picked there's just too many to answer all of them don't worry. and some are a little bit too individual to talk about in, in the stream um <laughs> but if you have a good question that's interesting for everyone then we'll definitely try to pick out as yes. many as possible today and of course uh like usual uh we have a giveaway which is right here Today, if you go to msitecom two slash insider, or if that link doesn't work for you, uh, just watch out. Well, keep an eye out on the chat because our chatbot uh, also gives you the link, the direct link to the giveaway every five minutes. Uh, so you can join there, and um, you know perhaps you'll be one of the because we have multiple of uh, Watch Dogs Legion game codes to be given away today. Um, and if you have already registered uh, for the first try, or if you just uh, if you have just joined, it doesn't matter. Once you're registered, you're uh, automatically in the drawing pool for the entire duration of the stream. So you don't have to redo it every time we announce a winner. And there are going to be several winners to be announced, so quite a good chance that you get one of them. So uh, make sure to register and definitely check out our loyalty bonus because we have been using this for the past few months. And uh, well, uh, it has proven to be quite useful because uh, some people have really been, you know, dragging in prices with that. So it definitely gives you a boost at winning. Uh, so check that out. Uh, yeah, I already see a lot of questions in chat about specifications. <coughs> a little bit of patience because later okay. we will get, get into all, all the details the about stuff. this. Of course, of course, of course. So and if you're wondering about resolution, refresh rate, type of panel, etc., etc., we will yeah. talk about all of that in this live stream. And how good you're going to win with this bad boy, we're going to get there. Easy wins. Yes. So <laughs> right now it's like all disassembled on the table because later I'm going to assemble this for you guys uh, so you can see step by step how this comes to life <laughs> all right now this is of course a curved gaming monitor now we have been uh, quite heavily uh, focused on curved gaming ever since we started with gaming monitors and you know we have done quite it's uh, extensive uh, research and have brought up many many models throughout the years uh, especially on the curved front uh, we started yeah, we with curved exactly and so, later on we went to flat yeah. i think most vendors had the other way around so they started with flat monitors and then um, yeah, yeah, also started my, to uh, offer curved but yeah one we did the it the other way around. we were uh, very uh we were very focused so that's also one of the reasons why we did quite well uh if uh, you know being just being humble <laughs> <laughs> so you know we we really didn't want to mix those two at the beginning so we wanted to you know be better at one front and then once we got really good at one front we started like we heel set a switch to a flat and now uh we're shifting uh some of the focus back to uh curves because we have something uh that was quite exciting to be announced especially in the gaming monitor world it's still uh, quite new so curved you know uh, 
if you're new to all of this, uh, okay, even if you're not new, you might not know, but Curve really has uh, its own benefit. So it's not just uh, you know something fancy to be thrown around like uh, you know just the sticker of saying it's curved and then it's supposed to be like whoa, okay. No, that's not the case because uh, I'm not sure about your ages, but if you are like around our ages, uh, you've been. A, yeah, you probably were a teenager when uh, you know the TV industry they shifted to uh, curved. Our game age? Power. Did you just put me in the same category? Come on, I I'm still well, in my twenties. Like... You're not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, technically you still are. Yes. There's a couple of months in between us, and Ja is already in his thirties, and I'm not. So yeah. I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So confronting see, with that. ever since last month, I <laughs> finally hit the thirty. So <laughs> let's get that out of the way. I hit my thirty. <laughs> he will be too which is soon, so don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, you're right. So um, probably if, if you're like around our time, our age, you know, back back when uh, the TV industry shifted towards curved, everybody was like, hmm, I don't really see the practical use of it because unless you're like a lonely potato for the rest of your life, I, I mean, you're probably not going to notice anything, but uh, I mean, if you're with more people, you're going to notice that some people is always going to be kind of left out of this benefit of this immersion because some edge is just going to be curving away from you instead of both coming towards you. Now, in the gaming industry, we noticed when we started with this, that was quite a different case because, well, you generally don't really sit with more than one people behind your gaming screen, right? That's for your own use. Yeah, no, and that's here, a big difference with TVs exactly. because with TVs you're with several people in a room and not everyone will always be straight in front of the TV, whereas for a monitor you're usually right in front of it. Um, so yeah, the benefit of curved for monitors, in my opinion, is much bigger than it is for televisions. And I think that's also why you don't see it on televisions that often anymore as you do yeah, on monitors. It's kind of uh, died out there. Uh, yeah, so uh, you know the, the important the importance there is that you know the curve uh, it, it really makes sure that uh, it's going to create this immersion for you because it matches your eyes peripheral vision. Now, the more curvature in this in this sense uh, you will have, which is also why this one is such a special case. The more of this kind of feeling you're going to create, and now if you pair this with the size of it, especially if you're talking about ultra wide. That's going to be, you know, uh, really the, the kind of combination that you're looking for when you're really going to, uh, if you really want to enjoy your games like you're inside the game. Um, so, in this case, with the ultra wide uh, 21 by 9, and uh, paired up with the size of it, the sheer size, 30, uh, 34 inch. Uh, yeah, you're really going to be enjoying this 1000 R rated curvature to its max. So. Of course, uh, I'm going to show you a lot of the stuff uh, later and also just how curved it actually is. So don't worry. Uh, I, see, uh, I see people really asking like, okay, uh, you know, what's the refresh rate? Uh, is it VA or IPS and stuff like that? So uh, just to answer your question, Edwin, uh, I see Edwin is back again. Uh, yes, this one right now is sitting uh, with a VA panel. Um, uh, Max Bunny is already saying is ultra wide QHD 165 hertz uh, more demanding than 4K or about the same? Well, um, if the refresh rate is the same, then ultra HD or 4K is more demanding than um, ultra WQHD. So the the resolution we're dealing with here. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, all right. Uh, but we actually got a very cool video about this. Maybe it's a good time to show. Uh, yeah. So this is the last question. Uh, so Bluefire is asking, is it out? Well, well, next week it's going to be out. So if logistics is going well, it should be available everywhere. Uh, yeah, it depends a little bit per depends region. Some are. regions take longer. Yeah. yeah. So next week it should be there. Now. Uh, before I really get into all of this, uh, so I just wanted to give you guys a general overview and some information regarding, you know, why curved, uh, what does it mean, you know, what, what should we pair you with, you know, what kind of size uh, will really benefit you. Now, really about this specific model, let's, uh, yeah, we're going to kick it off with a very nice little video that our colleagues in headquarters have created. So let's go. Enjoy.
All right. First of all, I really like Jorge's uh, comments saying "curve like my belly." <laughs> That's definitely definitely some charms to it. Now, well, I think so, I'm also a thousand yeah. R nowadays. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're currently standing at fifteen hundred R. No, you're not a thousand yet. I uh, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. <laughs> so. All right, so we have actually kicked uh, kicked off an entire new kind of uh, lineup, which is our Artemis uh, lineup, which uh, is of course where this one belongs. So this one is the Artemis 343 CQR. 3.4 meaning you know 34 inches, and three is like the third generation in this kind of um, specifications, and. It's curved with QuadSD and RGB, so now you know the full naming. Now, the Artemis is really going to kick off uh, with this one, but of course then there will be more models coming up to uh, fill this lineup, you know, different sizes with different features, different specifications, but they are all going to have one similarity for sure, and that is 1000R. So our, our Artemis lineup is really going to be our most immersive lineup due to the nature of the curve so thousand R now later on this uh, I'll tell you a little bit more regarding uh, what it all means and what is the R what is the thousand you know what kind of other ratings are out there but you know for now just some brief information um, okay so uh, of course before we get everything kicking I need to uh, get this guy put together and so I'm gonna do that now and show you just how easy that actually is despite its size and if you have any questions, uh, just drop them in the chat. I'm trying my best to keep up. Uh, no, uh, sorry, we do not give away monitors, at least not this stream. I mean, we have done it before, but uh, not this time. So basically, uh, there are four little parts where, which are loose. Of course, one, the monitor, and then you have the backbone. So the monitor stands, but then you have to put these two together to make a a full stand so that's very easy you just put it on and you don't even need a screwdriver yet because there's a thumb screw that you can use and voila first step done <clears throat> let me put this here and then turn the monitor for the sake of assembling Now, you just have to line up the back plate. So, as if you paid attention, you can already see that this is our, also the standard uh, visa mount. So, 10 by 10 centimeters. So, if you're planning on, you know, mounting this on a wall or an arm, uh, you definitely have the freedom to do so. So, there are two hinges that you can see a little bit closer here. Uh, if you switch. You just have to align these two hinges into the holes and then drop it. Uh, next up, get the screws. Don't lose the screws. Wait, I think I lost my screwdriver. <laughs> so you don't lose the screws, but you <laughs> lost the screwdriver. Where did it go? Ah, here. The monitor was covering it. <laughs> Ta -da. The monitor ate your screwdriver. I think it definitely tried. <laughs> So, you know, with this kind of monitors, uh, you really want to enjoy uh, like AAA title games. So, you know, for example, Cyberpunk or, you know, one of the latest titles came, uh, that are coming out. Uh, there like was already Hala, a question by like Blue Fire in the chat. Will it do good with games like Cyberpunk? Yeah, I think especially oh, yes. for those kind of games. Yeah, this is where... It's interesting. With those kind of games, like really, you know, the visually impressive uh, titles, that's really where you want to enjoy this kind of immersion with 1000R and this ultra wide that's really going to embrace your whole field of view and just really, you know, kind of swallowing you into the gameplay. That's where you really want to do it. Now, the last step is just simply put on the cover to cover up, uh, yeah, the screws and the back plate here. And that's it. It's a click system, so you don't need anything to uh, screw this up with. Or, I James mean, is staying on YouTube with. chat. Jack, get a screwdriver with a magnet next time. I think you have one, right? I actually have. It's just that the uh, head of this one is really small, so there's, there isn't really much uh, magnetic attraction to this head. So usually, if this head was like a little bigger, 
then uh, yeah, that would definitely work, would have worked better. Appreciate the advice though. So now we have the Artemis 343 CQR assembled. So might as well already show you guys what it can do with uh, the height. And let me create some space. Some people already noticed there's Very also a flexible. graphics card on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that later. So yeah, as you can see, a lot of flexibility here. You want to adjust the height, so you don't really, you know, get this kind of uh, gamer neck. <laughs> so really make sure, you know, it's to the right height and tilt it, and swivel it, you know, the way you want it to adjust this to the perfect position that you like. So, the front side. Let me first get the elephant out of the room. Uh, anybody can guess what this is? I mean, it's really nice to play with, but it has a very specific purpose. Boris is saying on Twitch they don't read chat. Actually, we do, but there yeah, are so yeah. many messages because we're on different platforms. Unfortunately, we cannot respond to everything. Uh, I see on Twitch already several people guessed it. It's a mouse bungee. Indeed, exactly. So, uh, uh, okay, got the mouse. As you can see, you know, some mouses can have quite a long cord and First of all, I like my uh, bureau to be very clean. Uh, so I like to do some cable management wherever uh, I can, where possible. Not, not just in your PC, but also on your desk. So basically this, for one, it will make sure that your desk will be a lot cleaner. And two, it will make sure that, let me put this a bit lower. If you're like, playing some very intense game, intensive game, and you need to move your mouse around a lot, you can make sure that the cable is not here somewhere and that's gonna get stuck, uh, you know, either behind your monitor's feet or uh, some other prop that's on your desktop, maybe even your uh, keyboard, because this way it really makes sure that your cable, your mouse cable is never going to be stuck anywhere. You see? You wanna hear a true story? about the experience that I had not using a mouse bungee in the does past. It, does it involve a can of Coke? Uh, no, a whole bottle. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And I accidentally put it on my mouse cable and I started to play, I believe it was Quake or on a road tournament, either one of them. Um, so I was dragging my mouse. I play at very low sensitivity. So I swiped my mouse all over my desk. And it was, I think it was one and a half liters of Coke. I, I even remember it was cherry flavored Coke all over my keyboard. <laughs> so you were, oh, so you were really putting the cherry MX caps into. <laughs> no, this was even before cherry MX was, was a thing in keyboards, but it was completely destroyed. So you were I already had to doing throw it away. You were already doing done. the cherry before it was cool. Yeah. I, I had a cherry keyboard, but not the one I wanted to have. <laughs> nice. You see, you know, guys, you know, this kind of cases, you know, I think we all have this kind of uh, on handy or, you know, this kind of clumsy moments, you know. Of course, me, I also have like once uh, when I was like very aggressively playing CSGO, and I had like a, a kind of like bowl of soup because I usually eat and play at the same time, spiritual time, right? And then, yeah, you can already guess what happened with the soup. Um, so yeah, this, you know, this little kind of thing can definitely make sure to uh, give you some benefits. And, it can you know, save your keyboard. <laughs> exactly. And we just you know, include this with these kind of monitors uh, so you don't have to buy a separate mouse bungee that's going to be boom placed on your desk like you see in the pro scenes where they have like this kind of brick and, a, and like a long neck sticking out and then you use that for uh, your mouse. All right, and, and is it detachable by the way? Can you take yes, it off? It's detachable, yes. So you can take it off if you, you are like left handed, you can also put it to the left side. They have the same uh, rails underneath for you to just simply unclick it and then click it in. Okay, maybe turn it around and we can take a look at how it works. Let me see if we can see. All right, 
can take a look Let's here. Oh. Uh, that's a, wait, a little bit low. So if you're using a wireless mouse, you can simply take it off. Yeah. So here you see there are two little holes. That's what it's for. Let me, um, oh, I can't really see what direction this goes. Wait, just a second. Oh no, I'm getting all my fingerprints on the monitor. No. Oh, did you have hamburger <laughs> for lunch? Yep. <laughs> no, not, not today, not today. Not today. Okay. I'm trying to, uh, you know, I, I know it's already like February, but uh, I'm really trying to still lose like, you know, the, the Christmas and New Year's kilos. I mean, January uh, didn't really work out that well for me. So, yeah. <laughs> I'm doing a dry February, so I'm not drinking any alcohol this month. Most people do it in January, but I think January is too long. So I picked the shortest month. Really? <laughs> That's smart, huh? That's very smart. Okay, so there are people asking global approximate price and is Titan 3 recommended in 2021? Uh, all right, so just trying to go through a few of these kind of questions. Um, yeah. So uh, the price is going to be quite different depending on where you are. Uh, you know, we're always you know, explain this by saying, you know, you need to keep in mind you know, uh, some regional taxes and you might have a different MSRP uh, in your retailers. Uh, you know, there are quite a few uh, influences, factors that influence this. So, but uh, our set out price, it can be lower, can be higher in your region, should be around 950, 999 ish US dollars. So that's what you should look uh, look at. And regarding Trident 3, very interesting uh, that you brought this up. Um, but depending on you know what kind of um, what kind of demand uh, you require, well, you're demanding from your games what kind of FPS you want to output, what kind of visuals do you like to enjoy. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, Trident 3 can definitely be worth your while, also depending on what kind of resolution you're playing at, because if you're like a more a 1080 1080p or even 1440p, Trident 3 is no problem. If you get like the uh, highest Q with the 2060 in there. You can definitely get around. Now, if you wait just a few months, uh, there's going, it's going to get even more powerful. Of course, generation after generation, it will always get more powerful, right? So you can then, uh, yeah, get the Trident 3 that's going to uh, really... I'm really having a fight with this little mouse bungee. Uh, James one on YouTube is asking, what's the resolution? Ultra wide QHD? Yes, that's correct. I think I'm going to give up because I just cut my nails and it's really hurting my fingers. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, okay, anything else? Let's see if there's... Uh, no, it's not 240 hertz. It's 165. Um, all right. So, um, so on the front side, you see there isn't really much to say. I mean, it has the uh, frameless bezels design with uh, the little chin right here. So nothing to really distract you. And if we go to the sides, uh, let me show you the left side. Another little feature. Ooh. A reflection of the green screen. <laughs> uh, that, that's always so nice. So I'll put it this way. So here we have this is not a button, but a headphone stand. So, you know, just like with the mouse bungee, we're just trying to make your life a little bit easier so you don't have to, you know, put your uh, headphone around your desk or anything. Now you can just neatly put it on the headphone hanger. And if you don't use it, you can just click it in. If you want to use it, you can click it out, and that's it. Now, if we go to the back side, which has more stories to tell. 
So this is the backside. As you can see, some glossy elements uh, combined with some matte elements. And here uh, is the kind of uh, the carbon inspired, the carbon styled finish. So. You can actually also feel the, te the texture difference, like carbon. And later, uh, when I plug in the power, you will also see that, yes, in case you're wondering, we do have RGB, which is this entire line where my finger is crossing right now. I mean, come on, of course, there is RGB. How do you expect to win games in 2021 without RGB? Now, if we move along a little bit further. So usually we have one button here. And now we have three. So one is for power. This one is a multifunctional 5 way joystick. Left, right, up, down, and you can click in. And each can activate its own specific uh, shortcuts. And we have one more dedicated gaming button. This is a, more or less a macro, a macro key, so you can set up uh, whatever function it is that you uh, use the most. Uh, and if you click on this one, it will activate that specific function. I'll show you this later in our gaming OSD app and how you can do this and what kind of uh, specification you can tailor make to be uh, dedicated to this uh, little one. Same case for the 5 8 joystick. All right, so now what do we have here? So you don't have a power brick with this one because it has a uh, built-in uh, power adapter. Oh, here. And if we move along, we have uh, the two times uh, HDMI's and we have display port, USB type C, you can use the type C to charge or for display purposes, whatever you like. And headphone jack and also two times USB 3.2's and one more USB upstream uh, if you want to use and control the uh, monitor's hardware functions. All right. So that connector will both um, control the, the, for example, the gaming OSD, but will also power the USB hub, right? Exactly. So if you don't plug it in, your USBs will not work. And when you use gaming, uh, gaming OSD control, definitely make sure you have that one plugged in otherwise it will not work cleaning my fingerprints blue fire gaming is asking uh is it good in dark games and movies that have dark scenes yes that's actually the very strong point of va panels um they're really good at at contrast uh, so dark is really dark Yes, uh, so you know it still has some uh, benefits over the IPS. So I know a lot of people are like leaning towards IPS, but VA definitely still stands its own ground. Depends a bit on what you're looking for. Yeah. If you're looking for, uh, if you, for example, do a lot of video editing and you want to have the best color accuracy, then usually IPS is the better choice. If you want to have like more immersion in darker scenes, better contrast, then VA is still stronger than IPS. So it really depends on on what what you do with your PC. Okay, so that's uh, what you can expect from the outside. Any question about that, just uh, let me know. Uh, the Godless um, is asking, is it HDMI 2.0 or 2.1? Uh, it's 2.0, if I remember this correctly, but uh, I might have to check this. Uh, yeah, mm. it's, both of them are HDMI 2.0, because you have two HDMI yeah. connectors, then you have one DisplayPort 1.4, and then you have the USB Type-C with um, the uh, DisplayPort Alt mode. All right, so there are more stuff coming in. Mm -mm -mm. Action Brother is saying, <laughs> but VA still has bad smearing, ghosting, and black level transitions. VA panels have also come a long way in that. Um, in the past, VA, especially when compared to TN, for example, was indeed slower, but both VA and IPS um, are catching up. So they're getting way faster as well nowadays. 
Um, so someone is asking, Aiden is asking, any news on the release date in Canada? Uh, unfortunately, I don't know the specific dates in specific regions, uh, but it should be around next week somewhere. And uh, Bluefire, indeed, you can control the RGB. I can show you how you can control this exactly and how you can also customize this to your own liking later. <laughs> Shadow is saying, just plug in the power, saying, I want to see RGB. All right, all right. I all heard right. Uh, an earlier hear question you. about DisplayPort, whether it was 1.2 or uh, 1.4. It's 1.4, the DisplayPort. Okay, so before I continue with uh, the demo, maybe we can already draw the first version of today, right? So It's a very good idea. Great that you guys all hang along and are still here. Definitely stay tuned. Uh, let's see who we have as the first winner. If you haven't participated yet, go to msr.com slash two slash insider. If you're on uh, Twitch or YouTube, once every five minutes, the bot will also put a direct link um, to our Gleam giveaway in the chat. If you are already signed up for the giveaway, um, you will be automatically um, enrolled in all drawings. Um, so no need to sign up again if you didn't win the first time. We will have several drawings uh, throughout the stream. And we have our first winner of today. Uh, nickname is Prims. Congratulations. E Prims. Congratulations. You won a game code for Watch Dogs Legion. So if you haven't participated yet, make sure to do so. Because we will give away several more game Still codes of Watch Dogs more. Legion. <clears throat> uh, Clement was saying, I want that MSI mascot. Well, this one is kind of sacred. Nobody can have it. So, get in line. <laughs> I'm still I waiting see for mine. Uh, Vagal is asking on YouTube, how can I increase my loyalty bonus? Basically, by, by watching the live stream and participating in the giveaways. Um, so, already, if you watch uh, for a second time and participate in the second giveaway, then you can already start claiming the loyalty bonus. Um, and then... Along the way, I, I believe if you have 10 or 20, then you will get more points for your loyalty bonus. Um, and that will increase um, if you participated more times to also reward um, regular viewers a little bit for being here. <laughs> oh, he's actually in the chat still. He's saying, wow, I won, finally. <laughs> <laughs> Always nice. Congrats. All right. Um, cool. So now I'm going to move on to curvature because... Ta -da -da. That's really what really makes this monitor shine. Uh, let me put this a little bit more to the center. Oh, this way. So this is the 1000R curvature. Now, what this basically means is that um, the R stands for the radius and 1000 is more or less one meter. So it has like a one meter radius. So this is like a cutout of a one meter radius. Now, the smaller this number is, the more curve it's going to have, right? So the smaller it is, this, the, the smaller the circle, the radius is going to get. So you might have already heard about 1800 or even 2000. And uh, lately, you know, 1500 was still uh, quite a big thing. Uh, it, it's, it's still going on right now. And now we're going even lower to 1000. So this is really giving this big bend. Now, if you compare this to like the table end right here, which is straight, you can see how much room you're having in the middle compared to the sides, right? So really, this is what you're looking at. And imagine if I put this a little bit more to here. Imagine now you are going to enjoy this. This is your, well, basically this is your eyeball, okay? This is not you. But what this means is that, see, your eyeball, it's also not flat. It's kind of a little bit round, and its peripheral vision is actually also like this, and it's kind of bending the world, but you don't really see this because, you know, uh, ever since we were born, that's how you look at the world, we're used to it. But Basically, really, your brain can put it straight. Yeah. So we don't really perceive the world as a flat surface, if you look forward or look anywhere. It's going to, now this is where this curve to really go, uh, is going to kick in and make sense because it's going to match, especially a thousand R, it's going to match your peripheral vision the best. Because, so this is you sitting in the middle and the, 
uh, the edges that are coming towards you and they are going to match your eyes natural field of view and the peripheral vision so this is really where you create this kind of immersion right and you can imagine that uh, you're going to have more benefit in an ultrawide when it comes to immersion and just how the monitor is going to embrace you, you know, and get you into the game. Because if you have a monitor that's like, uh, that's not an ultrawide, so you're going to cut out about 30% of the screen. So you have like with this real estate left. This is going to provide you or wait, your eyeballs much less immersion than when it's so much wider like in this ultra wide's case because now it really if you're sitting like just less than a meter away from your monitor you're going to see much less of the environment which is also going to be very distracting than in this case so here when you look forward you well you kind of your whole peripheral vision is more or less covered from edge to edge so really giving you that feeling you're kind of part of the game, right guys? So I hope this illusion really helps you understand how this all comes forward and towards you, well, your vision and why this creates, especially a thousand R, more immersion for you so you can enjoy your games better. You know, AAA title, title games and also racing, kind of racing titles, very, very amusing when you have this kind of monitor. So, you know, it's kind of mimics when uh, you play racing games, people tend to put mon multi monitors, you know, uh, triple monitor setup and stuff like that. So, this is really where that is going to, to go to. So, if you have like three monitors lined up, you're not going to line them up flat, right? You never see that because the other two monitors will always face inwards towards you, towards your eyeballs. That's what they are trying to create with triple monitor setup the same case with this because the edges they need to come towards you through your vision and well if you have three monitors like this lined up you're more or less like covered 180 degrees uh, so if you're then playing a racing simulation that's going to be a kick ass but uh, yeah unfortunately i don't have that many samples so i can't really demonstrate that for you but maybe next time yeah um, okay, so if we then, let me take another gaming monitor. So this is our MPG uh, 341 CQR. Now this one is rated at 1500R. <clears throat> you can see that when I put them together, um, they're not lined up perfectly because you know, at the edges, there's no distance, but if you go to the middle, you can really see the extra bending. See, there's still like this much. You looked. There's still this much room left between them. So this is like the extra curve when you compare 1000 to 1500. So this one, if you compare these two, you can see it's quite clear that how much more bending a thousand R is compared to a fifteen hundred R? I see some questions in the chat about the uh, uh, giveaway. Henry was saying on Twitch, I don't stand a chance against the OG viewers. Well, actually, I can see with which entry people won in the giveaway. And the previous one was not with a loyalty bonus. It was a, a regular entry. So it's not true that you can only win if you have a loyalty bonus. No, 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 no. It just helps you win It just, yeah, more. it gives you a slightly more bigger chance. chance, but you can definitely also win without. Um, let me see. I saw another question. Um about how to participate. For that, you can go uh, to msr.com slash two slash insider. And on uh, Twitch and YouTube, once every five minutes, the bot will put a direct link to the Gleam giveaway in chat. In Gleam, you can perform certain actions. The more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. Um, so uh, it's not like it is picked from the, from the viewer list. You really have to sign up through Gleam um, to be participating in the giveaway. So that's important. So I'm disappearing a little bit because I'm trying to hook up all the uh, cables and power so I can show its true power and full scale. So 
So, anybody in the chat already have experience with ultra wide gaming monitors, or what kind of resolution are you guys sitting at, or aspect ratio? Let us know. It's always interesting for us to uh, see what the viewers are experiencing. I see a very interesting question from Misfit on YouTube. What's better, having one giant eyeball or two little ones? Whew, I gotta get creative <laughs> here. I think I would prefer. <laughs> It depends on if I can see more with one eyeball, because if that eyeball is like really so much bigger, he can have like more curve, so you will see more from the sides. So that depends, really depends. If I can see I, more, I prefer the one two eyeball. smaller ones because your depth of vision. Ah, who needs depth of vision when you can have one super eyeball? That's true. <laughs> with zooming functionality, stuff like that. <laughs> All right. I see some answers in chat about what people are running. Action Brother is running um, 2560 times 1080 at 75 hertz. Neo Linkster, uh, 920, 1080, 60 hertz. Allen is running uh, 27 inch, 1440p. Interesting. 10, so somebody's already running ultra wide, but then on 1080p. And I also see some 40, 40, 40, 40, 40p people. 40, 40p, 27, 24. F metal is running 240 hertz, 1080p. Uh, Aiden is running uh, 1080p, MAG 271C. Really? Hmm. <laughs> Ooh, John R. He's flexing with the uh, 271 uh, QR. Ooh, he's F. got the quantum uh, dot yeah. monitor. No wonder he was advertising this model uh, earlier in the chat. All right, so many, many people still on 1080p, and then we have some 1440p's, almost no ultra -wides. And Paul Stoker, I'm not sure what kind of you setup you have, but you're probably playing on console if you're uh, playing with a 49-inch uh, monitor. No, no, it's uh, it's extremely wide. It's uh... 51, 20 times 40, 40. It's PC for sure. <clears throat> yeah, I don't think a console can drive that stuff. <laughs> on a uh, 49 inch, you're really enjoying the life, huh? So Most people are still running uh, 16 by 9, and I see a lot of 1080p and 1440. Not many um, Ultra HD. All right, so uh, guys, uh, you might have noticed that there's a weird flickering here. Well, that's because the camera frequency is not really lined up with uh, the, the light frequency. So that's why it seems like it's flickering, but it's not. Maybe if we turn to the detail cam, uh, it's going to pick up a different frequency and you will see mm. that. Mm, no, they're more or less using the same. So, um, okay. Michiel is looking if we can change the frequency a little bit so you can see it better because um, if you look at this uh, with your naked eye, everything is as fluent as it can be. So there's no Does this issue make there. a difference? Let's see. Hey. hey. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of difference. <laughs> <laughs> see, that's how it's supposed to look like. And also the light strip. So if we switch back to the main cam, you will see again what I mean. So you see, this is purely because of the camera. I can only change it from here for the close-up one, yeah. not for the main one. But so in the so, close-up one, you can see don't worry what it looks that. like in real life. <clears throat> so this is the monitor in its full glory with all the RGBs that you want to help you win every game. And get you more FPS. <laughs> Yeah, this makes me think about uh, when we were joking around, uh, you know, remember when I told you about Cisco and there was like a blatant hacker in my team? And also when he started hacking, everybody in my team was like, damn, he must have, he must have had a gaming chair with RGB. <laughs> <laughs> and everybody just understood the reference. It was like beautiful. And we just all started laughing, even though, you know, we're all a bunch of strangers. Love it. Uh, Ske Sketch Therapy is asking, how did you fix that? It was a neat trick, maybe camera tip. Uh, I changed the camera from 50 hertz to 60 hertz. Yeah. And that solved the flickering issue. Yeah. So, like I it has said, has to do with the frequency of, of the lighting, indeed, uh, in combination with your camera settings. Okay. For now, I'm going to lift this here. 
so I can answer a lot of your questions by going through what can you expect from this monitor specification wise and feature wise before I uh, really dive into uh, the live demonstrations of all the epicness that you can activate you know with hotkeys and whatnot so you don't ever really have to reach for the monitor if you don't want to if you want to you know have a crosshair popped up on your screen you can just do so with a hotkey but more of that later when we get into uh, Watch Dogs Legion and CSGO so for now right so uh, a little bit of a summary here I uh, put together um, just so you guys can uh, well get your answers uh, get your questions answered what does it have thousand R uh, it also has the AI gaming capabilities uh, we we'll demonstrate this later together with the optic scope so basically here we're talking about the smart gaming features that's going to help you uh, in certain situations to perform a lot better than others um, Keep in mind that some people might say this is considered cheating. Uh, later you will understand why I say this, but I consider this a technical, techno, technological advancement. So, you know, uh, you're not doing anything. It's you know, it's the hardware that's doing the work for you, and. Um, yeah, I personally still think it's cheating, but <laughs> <laughs> everyone can decide it for themselves. Yeah, like putting in a crosshair on your monitor where there's no crosshair in the game itself. In my opinion, that's cheating. But you can decide for yourself if you want to switch it on or off. Uh, we still have some disagreement within our department whether or not it's cheating. <laughs> I don't think we will ever agree on that. Okay, so uh let me uh while we're talking about this anyway so you guys have an idea of what we're talking about but later i will show you a lot more of these kind of options so let me get this out of the way and change the color i don't really see what i'm doing but uh let me take a look so here in the middle you see a giant crosshair Maybe I should get this closer. Can you maybe drag no. the, the window out of the way? I think it's easier to see it now. There you go. So you can change the color uh, either, either to white or red. And let me show you how quickly you can get this out of the way. <laughs> Cus UK agrees with me. He says it's cheating 100%. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you know, some some of you guys might not understand why you need this, but I'll show you this uh, once I open CSGO, just to take that game as an example. Now, you don't even need to open your gaming OSD or reach for anything. All you have to do is program a hotkey uh, to activate this, which I have done, as you can see. That's how you do it. And now, see, this is still on, and if you go back to capture, why we're showing you this through webcam is because this is not a software... Um, it's it's not showing up on your monitor as a software feature it's like really a hardware like it's a overlay it's on your monitor it's not inside a software so if we capture this you're not going to see this so it's not like um, i can actually yeah. show that we for example yeah. so here you see there's nothing here in the middle but if we switch back you see there is let me make this a little bit closer so this is what it looks like when you capture it and if you look on the monitor itself, then you see the crosshair. Yeah, with uh, so the the dragon's uh, mouth. Yeah, That's on his chin basically, and here nothing. So really, like I said, you know, this is being uh, this is an hard lay overlay, so or overlay, and uh, nothing will actually detect it, neither. Okay, so now you have an idea of what we're talking about. Uh, I will show you more of these kind of options later in game and how this is going to benefit you. <laughs> Raphael is saying on YouTube, let's call it a workaround. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's how I you like, could do I, it. I like the thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, uh, when we go back, uh, uh, I already explained to you guys you know, the thousand R, what does it really mean uh, in the gaming industry? You know, for gaming monitors, this is really still something new and very exciting, especially at this size and this uh, aspect ratio. That's really where you would get the most benefit out of the thousand uh, R. Well, 
Uh, if you're setting like quite far away, like a meter or even more from your monitor, you can argue that you want to have an even bigger size, you know, it's not 34, but you know, going to 40 inch and then ultra wide with 1000 R curvature. I mean, I can imagine how epic that's going to be, but uh, unless you're sitting that far away from your monitor, this is going to be more than enough to get you really, really, really into the game. So, um, yeah, it also has uh, HDR, so it's uh, officially 35 for uh, HDR 400. Now, what this means is that it's not the, uh, the HDR Ready or the HDR 10, uh, they're the same. So the, here you really have the real HDR capability of uh, displaying and enjoying HDR content. So we're really with a high dynamic range if you're new to this, uh, getting more details out of the dark areas and you know, having really, really good contrast and stuff like that. So here you really have the capability of enjoying this kind of content, whether it be it's like an HDR function in a game or uh, if you're a content creator and you enjoy HDR and you know, HDR uh, videos and stuff like that. So all of these kind of goodies and stuff, all good with this monitor. Also has to do a lot with the brightness. On a regular mm -hmm. monitor, you often see like 250, 300 nits. Yeah. Um, but this monitor goes all the way to 550 nits. So that's that's extremely bright. Um, and the higher brightness uh, gives the monitor the capabilities to, to display those kinds of HDR uh, images. Yeah, exactly. Like Sketch is saying, uh, it's a sharp, uh, sharp curve. Uh, right, you can say MSI uh, keep it tight for yep, the gamers, they will love that. Yeah, that's exactly the point. So, thank you. <laughs> and uh, see, it's just Chen saying I use Crosshair for hardcore deathmatch in Call of Duty. Now, Apex, lol. <laughs> good for hip fire yeah you know uh, so yeah like I said you know I was going to take Cisco as an example where the cross disappears but of course in other kind of games you have uh, these kind of scenarios where you have hardcore and there's like no hot and crosshair at all again that you can activate the crosshair you know and people uh, might complain how are you aiming so well but that's their problem all right see some more question would it be cheating if you stuck a piece of paper in the middle of your monitor instead um, well, hmm. it's basically the same thing. Also, if you punch a hole in the middle of your monitor, yeah. it's also basically the same thing. I used to do that back in the days with like a, a marker and just put like a little dot in the center. <laughs> Poor monitor. <laughs> um, Henry is asking when will the giveaway end? Uh, at the end of the stream. Yeah, so there's uh, still plenty more to come. Yeah. It's just Chen is asking, can it split screen for multitasking? That's a good yeah, question. That's actually uh, on our agenda as well. When I show you guys how you can make use of this gigantic uh, screen real estate. If you are just in doing some entertainment or you know, sick and tired of gaming because you play like for eight hours straight. Uh, yeah, I'll show you all, the, all that, how you can do it. Only eight hours? And most efficiently. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> to me, um, that, you know, that can be my death sentence at my, my age. <laughs> Critic Jr. is asking, I might have missed it as I joined later. Is it IPS? No, this is a VA panel. <laughs> Rev, for, my girlfriend said it's pretty. Oh boy, I gotta hide my wallet. <laughs> See, I mean, several nowadays, people everything asking. Is digital. You don't need to hide your wallet. She already probably has her bank account details. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I see people asking about MSI RAM. Now, we don't have MSI RAM at this point, but never say never. Indeed. Maybe in the future. Like good old just a deep set. Not saying it will be there, not saying it won't be there. Um, okay. a legacy ZA is asking, is it edge lit or backlit? It's backlit. Uh, no, no, no. Now for the tough question, said T D Kit, when will I win a giveaway? Well, if we had means of controlling the outcome, we might just squeeze you in, but uh, it's a fully random system that Michiel is like uh, currently using to draw the winner, so we have absolutely no say in who is going to win. Uh, it really depends on how well you use the system. I mean, like we explained earlier, uh, you, maybe if you just joined. Uh, if you really make use of our loyalty bonus as well, it's going to increase your chance of winning. And considering that once you're in the drawing pool, we because usually we give away quite a few uh, gaming keys, uh, you know, if you combine all the little factors together, I think your chance of winning is going to increase quite a lot. 
But it's not that you need the loyalty bonus in order to win. No. You can perform several actions also without the yeah. loyalty bonus. Um, and for each action, you get certain entries. Um, so, of course, if you have more entries, your chance will be a little bit bigger to win. Um, but you can always win. Uh, even with one entry, you can already be a winner. You just need some more luck then. Uh, Mon is asking, is it um, 0.5 or 1 millisecond? It's 1 millisecond, I believe. Yes, indeed. If you want to have 0.5, you can go to our uh, NVIDIA NXG2052 or the upcoming 253R. Both have 0.5. Yeah, and those also have extremely high refresh rate. More esports focused. And th this monitor is, of course, you can use it for esports titles. Um, but I think these kind of monitors are more interesting for those immersive AAA type of games. Or racing, for example, stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so the NIT is 550. Uh, John R is asking. And I think we now have pretty much covered majority of the stuff. Uh, I'm just going to continue. Um, <coughs> all right. So where were we? Uh, HDR. So yeah. In my little overview of all the uh, key features, what you can expect from this. Uh, if we switch back to this. Perfect. Uh, I see something is not really working well. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, so uh, Gaming OSD app. Um, this one, uh, if you're already familiar with it, uh, this one is actually different than the other ones because uh, the Artemis series, they have a specific uh, AI or smart uh, gaming feature, which is also implemented into the Gaming OSD 2.0 app. Now, so that's where it's going to be different than the ones that you might be used to. But uh, in just a little bit, I'll demonstrate all of that and show you what I mean. Uh, so yeah, the Gaming OSD app basically is uh, our software uh, addition to the product that we just want to you know, give to you so you can have a better time controlling and really make the best use of your monitor to the, mo yeah, to the most effect. Uh, yeah, Night Vision is also one of the uh, AI features uh, in which um, I'll have a visual later and also a live demonstration. But uh, briefly what it is, is that it's going to show you more details in dark areas. So if you're really playing, like for example, Watch Dark Legion later, you can have a lot of dark areas. And this will really help you see better and clearer in the dark areas without exposing or overexposing the entire image, the entire frame. So that's what the black tuner back in the days used to do. It makes makes it lighter, but it makes everything lighter. So everything becomes more washed out and just, yeah. And that's what you're trying to avoid. Now, uh, good question from Henry on Twitch. Wait, is it yeah. night vision cheating? That one is also open for debate, I would say. Yeah, I mean, uh, the jar of is it cheating? It's getting uh, bigger and bigger by uh, by the stream. <laughs> but yeah, it's also uh, this is it. It's something, there are also a couple of um, software tricks um, that can do these kind of things. I think in most games they are allowed, um, like reshade, and I believe NVIDIA also has um, this kind of stuff in their drivers that can, for example, um, do certain things with, with visibility in the game. Um, if it's cheating, I think it very much, much depends on who you ask. I think in most games these kind of tools are allowed like reshade and stuff like that okay so the, this is uh I, I like this question because uh i can also give you guys my point of view on this what uh sketch is asking uh, what is your favorite game what would you play on this if you had it all to yourself uh first the first few titles that pops in my mind is definitely uh, the witcher 3 uh, of course, then you need to have every setting set to max, you know, the, the hair details and everything there. Really, you can enjoy the environment, you know, there. If you really appreciate visually impressive games, then this is the best kind of combination to really couple it with. And also, you know, uh, I mean, um, <clears throat> the Ghost of Tsushima, uh, the Ghost of Tsushima or to, to uh, I think it was Ghost of Tsushima, but it's like a uh, Dark Souls styled game um, where you play this uh, samurai. And the graphics there is finger licking good. It's so good. Um, yeah, uh, what else? Uh, Cyberpunk can also be up there, but uh, compared to this, to, I mean, uh, Death Stranding uh, is also awesome. So, you know, yeah, those will be my type of games to really play on this. If I would I personally go for NO1800 because you have so much 
real estate and you because of the ultra wide you can yeah. also easily um have all your menus and stuff without interfering with the game yeah so that's, that's you what, know, where it can really like. also again cheating because you have more screen real estate so you don't have to move around that much to see the map right so you can already display this with the gigantic yeah it's not screen. really a, um, in, i know it's not yeah it's not really a competitive title and not that much of a competitive advantage it's yeah i wouldn't call that cheating that high refresh rate would also be cheating <laughs> exactly where do we stop yeah that's that's the the gray area basically but i think a crosshair that's a step further in my opinion i think that the uh, night vision is already more open for debate because also like uh or was already mentioned in twitch chat you can also turn up the gamma uh which will also um make uh dark areas more visible um but that would really mess with the quality of your image and night vision still keeps your contrast in in high quality <laughs> um, but the real question is will that prevent you from using it uh i personally i i don't use these kind of features i also wouldn't use the the, the crosshair function but it very much depends per person well you, uh, you have the option you don't have to use it <clears throat> so. somebody get this guy an uh, honesty award <laughs> i i can win without cheats yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, it's just jen is asking will there be a 240 hertz monitor we actually already have 240 hertz models um yeah. not this one specifically um so not an ultra wide yet but in 16 by 9 uh, 1080p we actually do have 240 hertz models um let me see. Yeah. So, uh, and there we also have uh, the 240 hertz with different uh, panel types uh, to each uh, his own taste. Um, the, the chat is. Uh, John, hard John to R. Up is with. saying, send one to the mustache guy to get a review. <laughs> I think you're talking about hardware unboxed. Um, well, that's <laughs> Australia. It's not really our region, but I, uh, I hope our colleagues. You. Um, yeah, actually, he has already reviewed one of our uh, 240 hertz monitors, gaming monitors, uh, which yeah, was the MAG two five one RX. He did, and um, yeah, so the review came out really well. Uh, as you know, you guys, uh, if you watch him, you know how critical he is of hardware and how much into details he gets with the testing. Um, yeah, he already did one. So if you're interested, after stream, you can check that one out. Uh, maybe that's a good monitor for you. That one is also uh, G-Sync compatible, officially certified, and with 240 hertz and IPS panel. Uh, so a lot of yeah, it's more there. of an esports yeah. focused kind of monitor. Um, I think he also reviewed the Quantum Dot monitor, right? Yeah, the 274 RF. He also did that one. <laughs> but also, if you yeah. want to see how it compares to to other monitors, definitely interesting to check out. The uh, the mustache guy, I'll uh, I'll remember that one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, uh, if there's anything more, me and Michiel, I'm gonna leave that to you because I, I I've lost uh I lost it already. It's too much. You too lost many. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, so if, uh, if there's anything else, uh, Michiel will help me pick it out. Uh, in the meantime, I'll try to uh, get back to uh, to my track. Um, yeah, so we just talked about night vision, and uh, if you you know color reproduction, if that's something that you uh, place big importance on, uh, yeah, we have excellent uh, color reproduction here, uh, about thirty percent more with our uh, white color gamut, uh, more than you know the the, the generic uh, gaming monitors out there. So here you have a much uh, well, a thirty or a roughly thirty five percent bigger color cap uh, palette covering more color, so you can also uh, represent and show more colors and more vivid and more realistically uh, <clears throat> so yeah if that's your thing uh, definitely uh, tune in and if you're wondering about TCIP3 and sRGB and uh, that's in just a moment so uh, we'll get to that um, so yeah I, of course you already know about uh, mystic light so uh, if you don't know how mystic like mystic light, uh, mystic light works I will show you in just a moment very briefly how the software works it's very easy you can even dedicate or tune uh, the specific areas not just choose pre uh, fixed effects so yeah some uh, nice and easy customization for you out there in uh, our mystic light and if you have actually if you have more uh, mystic light enabled products um, it doesn't even necessarily 
already mean it, it has to be MSI because we have many many third party and also partners uh, that we have worked together with uh, that will also work within our MSI uh, well the Mystic Light ecosystem so you can't have something else from another brand and if it's like officially listed uh, as uh, the compatible device then everything can sync with the same effect so you can yeah, so like rgb synergy. memory from different vendors but also um for example our motherboards have different rgb headers uh, you connect can connect third-party rgb devices on that and you can also sync it through mystic light uh, also with the monitor for example and you can go even further if you for example have a nano leaf or philips u lighting then through our ambient link feature you can uh, even use those lights uh, in certain games that support ambient link um, so that's really cool i think and then you can really synchronize basically your whole room in terms of RGB. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, Itachi is asking, what's the name of the of this monitor? It's the Artemis 343 CQR. Yeah, and just to make your life easier, if you uh, like look up in the right upper corner, you can have a little, uh, let's say, um, <laughs> A helping card. Um, okay. So um, yeah. So if you uh, because there were already some questions regarding, hey, is this uh, G-Sync? Is G-Sync compatible? Uh, you know, what's the variable sync here? So here we have the FreeSync Premium. Now. We haven't officially tested this yet, but uh, um, you know, to my experience, this shouldn't be a big problem. But you can uh, still try because nowadays, with uh, well, if you're uh, if you have a uh, NVIDIA GPU that allows it to sync with FreeSync, you can still try this without the uh, official uh, G-Sync compatibility certification. It it's not going to be working guaranteed, uh, so that's going to differ per model per uh, monitor, but. Uh, we have seen a lot of positive cases in which, uh, yeah, they do kind of work even without the uh, official certification. Of course, if it's officially certified, it's going to be much, uh, much more uh, compatible. Then and you're sure it works, and now sure. you can give it a go. And in yeah. many options, and over experience, you see that it does work. Better. But, but yeah. yeah, in this case, you can still uh, definitely try. And um, yeah, so it's not that you can only switch it on if it's a certified monitor. You can still switch uh, the feature on in the NVIDIA drivers. Um, yeah, so Edwin, um, I guess you missed this part, but that's uh, that's okay. Uh, we have uh, 550 nits here, uh, and HDR it's uh, 400. And uh, how to control this? You can all do this in uh, the OSD. <clears throat> John is really. Uh, Promoting the 274 uh, QRF QD here. <laughs> um, okay, so continuing, uh, I just was then already showed you everything there's to know about it. Uh, so more uh, specification wise, uh, yeah, 34 inch. In case you missed that, uh, DCI-P3 and sRGB. Uh, very important uh, when you want to have a good uh, and accurate color uh, reproduction. So a average of a 92.7 and sRGB respectively a 170.8% coverage. So here you have excellent color coverage and rep uh, accurate color uh, reproduction. Because uh, uh, usually when you have a monitor that doesn't really uh, pay too much attention to the color accuracy and stuff like that, you see that it's going to come out around 85% uh, of DCI-P3. So in this case, uh, this case, you already have like 92.7, which is already very, very, very close to a uh, content creation productivity uh, monitor, which has like a 95% plus DCI-P3. So here, excellent color stuff. So really helping aiding with uh, how the whole concept of being one with the game. Really truly enjoy and being uh, you know, captiv captivated with your game, in your game. Uh, yeah, the rest of the question, by the way, from Terun is asking, what is FreeSync Premium? Um, well, what FreeSync essentially is, is that it synchronizes your frame rate with the refresh rate of your monitor. Um, but maybe you're referring um, to the difference between regular AMD FreeSync and FreeSync Premium. Um, with the regular, uh, free sync you already get that adaptive sync feature but with premium you get some um, extra demands um, to be able to carry that tag 
Um, for example, you need to have at least 120 hertz of refresh rate, um, which is not required for the regular FreeSync. You, for example, also have uh, 75 or 100 hertz monitors um, that carry the FreeSync tag, but FreeSync Premium will give you at least 120 uh, hertz, in this situation even 165. Um, and for FreeSync pre Premium, you also need to support the uh, low frame rate compensation feature. Um, and basically, if you have an extremely low frame rate, um, that will help you to get, still get a smoother experience. Um, and that feature is not required for regular FreeSync, but it is for FreeSync Premium. Uh, yes, I see another it's... question. Is it FESA 75 or FESA 100? I believe 100. it's 100. Yeah, it's 100. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, TDK, uh, TD uh, we talked about the price, uh, so uh, shortly, depending on where you are, uh, it can vary, so either lower or higher than between 950 and 999 US dollars. Um, yeah, so Itachi is saying in his region it's about 899, so yeah, like I said, it can be lower, can be higher, really depends on where you are. Um, one uh, millisecond uh, MPRT. All right, uh, I'm gonna continue. Uh, so yeah, the aspect ratio, of course, it's ultra wide, uh, 21 by nine, and uh, one millisecond response time, and the refresh rate being 165. So I hope now this kind of uh, covered all the uh, questions you guys might have had about the monitor. Now continuing, just to give you the visual representation of you know uh, how much ultra wide. Uh, actually is wider than the regular wide QLHD. So there you have the aspect ratio of 16 by 9. So here you can already count of uh, about more than 30% of increase in the screen real estate. And if you draw the picture of a 16 by 9 Full HD uh, into this one, uh, you can see just how much <laughs> screen real estate you're going to uh, increase, so about 100%. So it's basically having two small monitors there, uh, more or less. <clears throat> uh, okay, so uh, just try to keep up with the chat. So seems like we're doing good. Um, yeah, so uh, like Michiel also said, you know, with uh, a lot of the games, you can really benefit from a big a screen real estate. So in case where you need to see more is, uh, before you have to move the camera movements. So here you don't have to move. You can already see more compared to a regular sized uh, 24, uh, well, I mean 60 by 9. Uh, 24, 25, 27 inches at uh, Quad HD or Full HD. So here you really have a physical benefit to having a bigger screen real estate because you can see more uh, in some type of, uh, well, I think a lot of uh, RGB type of games that's going to be really benefit, uh, beneficial in, in which uh, the map visibility and the map uh, representation is very important. But also racing games, for example, you can see further to the sides, which also gives you a bit of a benefit compared to a 16 by 9 monitor. It really depends on the, on the type per game, how much uh, advantage it will give you. But in certain titles, and if you're into those titles, for example, strategy games, racing games, there can really benefit you to have ultra wide monitor. Okay, yeah, uh, so we also briefly addressed in what kind of uh, panel it was. Uh, I think we threw out the uh, stream already also up, uh, attacked the uh, the benefit and what uh, what kind of doubts people had about VA. And the VA is still very much standing its ground with uh, the excellent contrast ratio. And um, yeah, it's not really lacking. High. Of course, if you want to have more, uh, even more accurate color reproduction and stuff like that, uh, you need to go to IPS. And, but yeah, for um, for what it is, this uh, VA is still very, very, very capable in this case. Uh, you are not going to lack anything. And just to make it clear, this is an indication. Yeah. This still very much depends from model to model. Um, not every VA panel is the same and um, gives you the same performance as another VA panel. Um, same goes for IPS, same goes for TN. This is just a general indication to show you um, the strengths and weaknesses of the different panel types. Okay, so uh, I said I'm going to show you a visual and this is what I meant when I uh, mentioned uh, night vision is going to help you see better in the dark, more, see more details in the dark without like doing what the traditional black channel used to do is like just smearing your whole image with uh, a white uh, washed out uh, sort of effect. So here... Yeah, basically really, overexposing yeah. it so it, it gets very light um, and... yeah. 
Uh, later, when I fired up uh, Watch Dogs Legion, I'm going to show you in-game just how this translates into uh, you know real in-game moving uh, real-life action. Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so um, we can imagine that you know with a, a much bigger screen, screen real estate, there's going to be much more uh, lighting, and other emitted effects that's going to come towards you uh, into your eyes and. We definitely make sure that uh, we're going to provide you with an utmost eye care, so eye comfort. So here, that's why we have uh, optimized, uh, you know, how much eye strain you're going to get with this kind of monitor. We have eliminated, uh, or well, very much improved the blue light that's being emitted. Uh, later in the USD, OSD, I can also show you just how you can even just eliminate blue like uh, uh, like 100 percent so you can have more uh viewing time behind a monitor without being especially late at night uh being disturbed with eye strain uh, so yeah uh, generally it's just you're going to have much less fatigue as compared to uh the traditional ones so you can enjoy all your gaming sessions you know how many hours you like and this is going to definitely help you out a lot. Uh, we also have, uh, you know, the TUF uh, certification here. So a very, very, very prominent uh, German and international uh, agency with a very high standard. I see a question in chat uh, from Sketch Therapy. What is VA? Uh, it's a type of panel and it means vertical alignment. Um, so basically there are um, three panel types that are extremely common nowadays. Um, one is TN, uh, which is twisted pneumatic. Um, that's what you used to see a lot in gaming monitors. They are generally very fast, but don't give you uh, very good color accuracy. Um, and also the contrast is, is kind of limited when compared to, for example, VA. Um, then you have VA, vertical alignment, and you have in-plane switching, which is IPS. Um, IPS is generally really good at color reproduction and viewing angles. VA is usually very good at contrast, um, and TN is very good in uh, um, in speed, basically. Um, so all have their advantages and disadvantages. It's not like there is one holy grail of panels. Um, so yeah, it, it depends on what you want. But VA is vertical alignment. That's what it stands for. By the way. Do you know what time it is, Ja? I don't know. You tell me. It's time for another giveaway. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. If you're already signed up, no need to do anything <clears> again <throat> because you'll automatically be uh, included in the next drawings. Um, if you're on Twitch or YouTube, you can also follow the direct link to our Gleam giveaway that our bot will put in the chat once every five minutes. Um, in Gleam, the more actions you perform, the bigger chance you will have to win. Uh, and if you're a returning visitor, make sure to also claim your loyalty bonus um, for a slightly increased chance um, of winning in this giveaway. Wait, how many? And now I have our next winner for today. How many winners today. have we already drawn? Just one, right? Only one. Uh -oh. So it's time for the next. <laughs> Should have stopped me sooner. Yeah, yeah, we, we will do some more in this stream. Uh, but our next winner for now is Jojo Lele BKN. I have Ooh. no idea if I pronounced that correctly. You just uh, had a mouthful. Jojo Lele B B K N. Congratulations! You also won a game code for uh, Watch Dogs Legion. Keep an eye out on your mailbox because we will email um, the game, game code with some instructions on on uh, how to claim it. Uh, we will email you that that to you in the coming days. So if you haven't participated yet, make sure to do so because we'll have a couple of more drawings later throughout the stream. Back to Ja. <laughs> All righty. So, <clears throat> that concludes the uh, most boring part of the stream. So now we're going to get into more action. Now, first of all, let's just start <laughs> with the easy part. So, because it's been staring you in the eye for the entire, more or less the entire stream already. How do you change the RGB on this? Because uh, not everybody is aware or familiar with this. Uh, basically, what happens is well, let me put everything back in place first. Get rid of this. Create some room here. OK. 
careful with my grenade. Kauki Nassim is asking on YouTube, uh, stretched gaming, is it good for aiming? That very much depends on who you ask. I know that certain Counter-Strike pros play with a spread, stretched image to, um, because basically it makes them bigger. Yeah, so uh, the hit model is going to be more easy easier to spot to also. Yeah, but also easier to spot, right? Um, well, easier to spot is only for your center and central field of view. Yeah, I know. I know some people uh, do it. I personally prefer not to to stretch the image. I actually also play as stretched, but not as stretched as uh, those kind of people. <laughs> That's going in to arena shooters, weird. I actually play with black bars. I play four by nine. Mm. Well, everything for more FPS, right? Uh, not specifically for more <laughs> FPS, but just an easier overview in those kind of games. That's distraction. All right. Um, see another question: Do I need to turn off motion blur? I would personally always switch off motion blur. I, I really don't like the effect of motion blur. Some uh, people do. Yeah, I really so don't. It depends on your preference. Yeah. But I would personally always switch motion blur off. I don't like it. I always find it very hard to believe how people can survive motion blur. It's, uh... Yeah, like maybe if if you want to be immersed more, then I can understand like in in more immersive titles that you might want to have it on. But if you want to play something. Um, Somewhat competitively, I would never switch on motion blur. Nope. <laughs> and Kauki's asking, can you tell the resolution? It's um, 3440. There goes my grenade. And 1440 in high, height, so vertically pixels. 3440 times 1440. So ultra wide quad HD basically. <clears throat> okay, so first of all, what you do is you get into. Oh, let me switch the input. First of all, you switch to the right input. <laughs> exactly. If you have more desktops lined up, because right now I have two of them. Uh, plugged into the monitor, but I'll show you why in just a moment. So first of all, you get into Gaming OSD. What you then do is you go to this little RGB button. And here you choose whatever effect it is that you would like to do. So very simple and very intuitive. Uh, if you don't like it, you know, you can choose off or um, you know, random flashing. Uh, yeah, basically, those are your choices. Let's take a look on the back of the monitor. Can you maybe switch between a few? So right now it's like a static. And you can even, uh, well, go to, for example, uh, Meteor. So that you have Meteor. Uh, Rainbow was uh, you know, this the default mode. And Lightning. Breathing, some flashing. <laughs> Max Bunny is saying on Twitch, motion blur plus VR, then you need a brown bag while you play. <laughs> I would probably need a bucket <laughs> if I would combine those two. And when you go to static, uh, if we then go back to the capture, you can uh, even uh, customize and tailor make each sections. So if you click on a specific uh, area, you can choose what color it's, uh, it should uh, well display. And this way you can customize this entire, uh, entire thing to your own liking. So get that Picasso out of you and uh, make something nice. And yeah, then that's it. So a very simple uh, little pop-up software because, you know, uh, we used to have uh, many of these kind of standalone softwares back in the days, but uh, we tried to pack everything together. Uh, so this one, Mystic Light, was also squeezed into uh, Gaming OSD. So you don't need two separate apps to uh, change the settings and stuff on your monitor. 
<clears throat> hey, Broker is asking, can you control the monitor RGB via Dragon Center? Uh, yes, yes, definitely. If you go to Dragon Center, you can also go to uh, the area, uh, well, Mystic Light area, and then you can just click on monitor and then basically do everything what I just did. But then in a so little bit different So you can also sync interface. it up with other devices there. Yeah. yeah. So it will pop up in your overview with all the connected and Mystic Light supporting RGB devices. Um, and there you can link them all together and sync them up if you, if you want to. <clears throat> Um, yes. Okay. So then, uh, coming back to Game OSD, uh, I'm not going to get into to the too much details or show you everything. But uh, if you're wondering about something, uh, just ask it in the chat. But I'm just going to go over some uh, uh, features that I think that's uh, worth your time. Uh, so first of all, very important on the left side is if you don't like to create your own profiles, but I highly recommend you do, you can just choose uh, our own prefixed uh, profiles on the left. So if you are into FPS, you can see if our uh, pre-configured FPS is going to suit your taste. Well, you're not going to see a difference uh, through the capture because uh, this is like a hardware change. So we cannot show this to you. But um, if um, let me show you later when I have created all the profiles and stuff to show you what the difference is through um, the webcam. So. Basically, what's important here is that you can tailor everything to your own liking. You know, if it's brightness uh, is too low, you can set it higher. Uh, contrast, uh, you can even make it more artificially sharper. If you're really into crisp, 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 then you can, you can cut your fingers. Uh, you can all do this here. Um, color temperature, you know, if you can even uh, choose a faster response time. But that doesn't always mean that it's going to be better or beneficial for you. So you got really got to see uh, when this does work out and when it doesn't. So that's why standard is set on fast. Um, so yeah, and screen assistance, what we mentioned earlier, uh, here is where you choose what kind of style you like and what kind of color. So for example, if I go for uh, this one, it's let me show you from the cam. Uh, Waiting for me... my director. There we go. <laughs> Needed to find the right seat. <laughs> so oh, let's put it here. So right now it's a red crosshair. Now, if you like white better, then you can just choose white. And you know there are different types. This one reminds me of Halo. <laughs> really, really back in the days. This one too. I think this one you got with Halo when you used the shotgun, right guys? Correct me if I'm wrong. But yeah, here basically you choose the colors and um, we can also pre-configure this with hotkeys. So I will show you how, because that's going to be useful because you don't want to come here every time you want to change something. You gotta you know, get, get, get out of your game, you gotta wait for it to take effect, but you don't need to do all of that. Uh, same, so here with the optic scope, so that's our uh, AI and slash smart uh, gaming feature, which gives you an artificial zoom over your exist existing view. So uh, I can better demonstrate this in game later, but uh, I'm not right now. I'm just going to show you the key features and stuff. So here uh, you can choose for small, medium, large, and how many times you want to have this artificial zoom. <clears throat> and uh, I mean, in competitive games, I can think of a lot of situations in which this would have helped you significantly. Uh, because it literally uh, makes your target larger, the, the target area much larger. So there's much more, many more uh, pixels for you to hit. So the, tar the hit target is very, uh, well, it's just easier to hit it. Um, so continuing, you know, uh, what else is important here for you to know is, uh, well, somebody was already asking about multitasking now. F to start with, for example, if you are like someone that's very busy and actually uses more than one PC or one source of uh, display for the display, uh, you can use picture by picture or picture in picture. Now, what this means is that, for example, if I go for uh, picture by picture, you can, um, you know, display two sources at the same time so you can multitask more efficiently or even more effectively. Um, 
So if you just simply press start, uh, it really shows which uh, source it had to take. So these are two desktops. This is uh, from the Trident X that's under the table, and this one is from the ESIS TI5 under the table. So two sources. Now, uh, you can even combine your uh, mobile phone, if your mobile phone supports a display output, to display your mobile phone here uh, at a 16 by 8 uh, sort of uh, ratio. And then use that one for uh, you know anything that you're doing on your phone, but then you can display that on your screen as well. And on the left side, you can have a predominant bigger display. So um, you can also go for a different mode. Uh, so you don't really see it, but here I just chose mode one or mode two. But right now the resolution is very small, so you don't really see it. So you can change the resolution as well if you don't like this kind of resolution. You can make it bigger by changing the resolution to, for example, 1080p. Uh, so I selected a different mode, and then what you have is that it will uh, redistribute the screen real estate differently. So as you can see here, the second source became smaller, and the first one became bigger. So that's picture by picture. And now if you go to picture in picture, it's literally what it means is the source is going to be in your source. So one is going to have the entire desktop and the other one is uh, displayed on top of it. So I did like this. So here, this is the second desktop. You can choose this position uh, by um, this option, left, right, uh, top, or uh, left, right, bottom. Uh, even the size, so if you don't want it to be displayed that big, go for small, it'll be smaller. And when you don't want it, just stop. So the other one which is going to help you significantly, uh, significantly when you're like uh, just uh, trying to entertain yourself or uh, doing a few things at the same time and you need different windows to be opened at the same time, go to split windows and you can choose a, let's say a diversion of how the windows will be divided what kind, what type, and what form. For example, I chose this one, and then choose which ones you want to display. Number one, number two, number three. Once you're done, if you apply, everything is magically arranged. So that's uh, split windows. So there are more options for you to explore there. And <clears throat> so if we uh, go to, this is very important, uh, macro key, because this is really a uh, macro key and uh, also where you make the hotkeys. This is going to make your life much easier. And so remember when I showed you the backside of the monitor, there were like three buttons. So the first one was a uh, the power button, the second one was a 5 way joystick, the third one was a dedicated macro key. So this is... The macro key, this is what, the, what it's referring to. So here you can see what the correspondent functions should be. Uh, where it can be either, for example, launching gaming OSD, or uh, switch to a specific profile, or it can be even screen assistant on or off. So here you can choose which crosshair, so screen assistant is, uh, refers to the uh, on-screen crosshair. Whatever that one is, uh, is going to be. So many options for you to do here. And <clears throat> when we go to settings and, uh, well, for this part, maybe we uh, here we could switch to the other one so people can see better to the yes. capture. There we go. Yeah, so uh, what I showed you earlier is so with the macro key. So here you can see the <coughs> options for, for example, screen assistance. Now you see it better. Now, if we go to settings, uh, this is uh, not that important for you, but uh, hotkeys, this one is really important. Here, let me show you my mouse as well. So here, um, you can set pretty much uh, almost everything uh, to a hotkey, brightness, input source, alarm clock, uh, screen assistance. Right now I have a uh, screen assistance set up. Uh, gaming profile 2 and gaming profile 1 setup and optics scope. Uh, 
So here is really where uh, you just yeah, make the hotkey for all the regular ones that you use on a regular basis. So you don't have to open Game USD time after time. But you do have to make sure that it's enabled. Once you've done all of this, there's one more window that's going to be uh, quite essential for you if you uh, use multiple uh, features and options. You can go, this uh, refers to the 5 8 joystick, up, down, left, right, center. And each will have its own uh, specific features that you can activate when you do up, down, left, right, or center. Either, you know, it can be uh, activating night vision uh, or the optic scope, uh, picture in picture, picture by picture mode, or different game modes. So this is where you set this kind of stuff up. Now, once you have done all of that, you can truly start to use, uh, well, your monitor really personalized and use it to your liking. And when you create a profile, this is how you do it. Here, uh, I've already pre uh, created two. For example, one profile with night vision on, one profile with night vision off. Uh, if you want to one, uh, add one more, just click on the little plus, name it. You can choose a... Uh, pre-configured profile to use as a base or basis and then just add so for example Call of Duty and then that specific profile will have all the options and uh, specifics that you chose for example 100% brightness but only 60-50% bright uh, contrast uh, you want to have a little bit more sharp and crispier uh, in this profile Night vision is always as strongest or at uh, artificial intelligence, so you will decide for itself when it's needed. Uh, color temperature you can choose, you can change, so really anything uh, you do will be saved into this profile. So when you activate this profile, all the settings that you have pre-configured will be shown. And this is very beneficial for uh, you know gaming, so when you have different kind of games with different kind of uh, needs, uh, visuals, and etc, etc. You can, you can make sure that you can have uh, the best time or the best experience while playing the specific game. And that's what I this see is a couple for. of questions in chat. Um, Sketch Therapy is asking, uh, you can bind the zoom to your aim, right? So I think he means that, for example, yeah. you can bind it to your right mouse click. So then you can use the zoom function. Uh, yes, I believe you can bind that, right? Um, well, uh, let me check because I haven't tried that out specifically because, um, well, how it works is that, uh, for example, here, uh, optic scope. So if you go to the optic scope setting, um, it will give you a very specific options as to how to activate this. Now, you can, if I, for example, uh, set this back to default and you need to click on uh, Shift, Control, or Alt, or choose one of it. Okay, so it's a, it's a key combination. You yeah, cannot bind but it to you your can, mouse. You, you, the mouse you cannot do. So, for example, if, if you press a number, it will work. If you press a key, it will work. But you cannot bind your mouse into this. Okay. So that's not possible. Well, that's something that maybe we can add in the future. Because I, I would see why people would like to have that yeah feature. definitely but you know i think you once we have the technical or the hardware uh, uh obstacles <laughs> worked out uh that's definitely a very very good feedback yeah we will definitely transfer that over let me see chris s is asking is it a 1440p or 4k monitor it's ultra wide 1440p so uh 3440 times 1440 pixels um avatar is asking does this gaming OSD 2.0 support the MAG342 CQRV monitor? Three, four, uh, sorry, which one? Three. The MAG342 three, four, three, four, two, two. CQRV. CQRV. Ah, yes, that, that one is also uh, with gaming OSD 2.0. Okay. Um, let me see. I think that was it for now. So let's get back to you. Okay, okay. So um, now I'm going to demonstrate to you guys uh, how night vision works, for example, in a uh, real-life game uh, action. 
uh, situation and also how uh, the optics go for example is going to work in game how that's going to look like so yeah it's going to be uh, quite refreshing for you guys because this is very new uh, so now we're going to switch to gaming but what we have to uh, do have to talk about you know for example if you are interested in this kind of models uh, you know it's very interesting it's very immersive and you can show a lot you can really enjoy the games but you do have to remember that this is in uh, this is still an ultra wide uh, quality gaming monitor uh, so you know the resolution the ratio uh, you're going to need a well quite a <laughs> capable GPU in order to have a decent uh, experience when gaming especially when you are like into a more uh, AAA title game or a, a just a visually more heavy game than esports games so if you were if you're going to play esports games with this kind of with for example this monitor at uh, Artemis 3 for 3 CQR and you want to get everything out of it you're going to have a less uh, hard time than when you for example play Cyberpunk. So we really do recommend that if you are someone that's, that that likes to have his game set to you know relatively high setting uh, and you want to use the full uh, the, the full resolution of it and aspect ratio, you should definitely be looking at something like for example that's why I also have this one lined up here on the table. So something that's going to have. Uh, similar power as this one which is our uh, 6800 XT Gaming X Trials uh, so this is going to give you a really 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 awesome time if you want to enjoy this kind of resolution and screen real estate and uh, you need to see all the details and the colors in your game to really you know embrace the game so um, yeah uh, 6800 XT uh, Game X Trials or s something similar, right? So right now underneath the table, um, I'm going to play this with uh, our ESUS Di5, but in that one we have currently the uh, RTX 3080 Ventus, also a 3x fan. So these two, you know, battling very neck to neck uh, performance wise, but I think this is already not something new already to you guys, right? Because I think you all watch YouTube. Yeah, these um, cards are basically competing against each other, 3080 and the 6800 XT. And that's approximately, if you want to play triple A titles on this resolution and you want to play high refresh rate and comfortably, then that's approximately um, the tier of graphics card that you would need to look yeah. at. So for majority of the games, uh, that are, that's, uh, which are not esports titles, uh, you know, you want to preferably have a 60 plus FPS experience. And at this resolution and ratio, depending on, you know, of course, what uh, what kind of preset, quality preset you used, and yeah, you're not going to have a good time if you have like a uh, mid and entry uh, GPU. So you really need like these kind of bad boys if you truly want to enjoy something like this. So, you know, we just want to inform you that uh, you don't get this kind of monitor expect, but you're not really fully aware of, you know, how you're going to enjoy this uh, hardware wise. So you, re you really gotta keep that in mind. Um, okay, so uh, with that said, we're going to get into uh, Bastard Legions to begin with and show you guys uh, a little bit of gameplay and uh, also you know how uh, the ESUS Ti5 with the 3080 is going to perform perform but also showing you guys in live action our uh, night vision software because it's not just all talks in the meanwhile I will answer some more questions Jono is asking can I use a, a GT 1030 yes you can I believe it even has HDMI 2.0 so you can even uh, drive to full resolution or of course use display port um, but I don't think you will get much further than Minesweeper with that um, let me see Kirill's K is asking is it a FreeSync or a G-Sync monitor this is a FreeSync premium monitor um, of course you can uh, switch on the G-Sync compatible uh, feature in the NVIDIA drivers as well but this is not an officially certified monitor doesn't mean it doesn't work, um, but it's not guaranteed that it works. Uh, I think those were the questions for now, so let's switch to the game. There we go.
And this will uh, look slightly interesting because, of course, we're streaming in 16 by 9 resolution. Uh, in our, our situation, uh, 1920 times uh, 1080, so full HD. And this monitor is, of course, a 21 by 9 monitor. Um, so you will see a black bar in the bottom um, because the screen is basically too wide for us to, mm. to capture and broadcast. Yeah, so you're seeing two aspect ratios on your screen. That's why there's a difference. Okay, so the game is just locking in. <clears throat> so for your convenience, because we know from all the experience, people like to ask about this. You can see in the right upper corner uh, what the situation is when it comes to the hardware uh, specifications. Uh, okay, maybe uh, let me make this a little bit bigger for you guys. While you do that, I think it's a good time for another giveaway. So if you haven't participated yet, go to msi.com slash two slash insider. Or if you're on YouTube or Twitch, um, every five minutes our bot will also put a direct link to the Gleam giveaway um, in the chat. In Gleam, the more actions you perform, the bigger uh, chance you will have to win. If you've uh, participated in more of our giveaways during these live streams, make sure to claim your loyalty bonus for a slightly increased chance to win. Um, and then we go to our next winner for today. And that's um, Jeffo, congratulations. I don't know if I pronounced it correctly, um, but you won a game code for Watch Dogs Legion. Congratulations, man. Well. Hope you congratulations. have fun I hope you enjoy. Uh, keep an eye out on your mailbox. We will email you the uh, game code and uh, instructions on how to uh, uh, claim the game yeah. um, to you in the coming uh, days. Contact you uh, in the coming days. Yeah. Uh, if you have participated yet, um, make sure to do so because you will still have a chance to win a game code for Watch Dogs Legion. Yeah, so uh, right now you see uh, I'm already in a relatively dark area. Of course, you know, Watch Dogs Legion is a massive, massive open world uh, game. You can, you know, explore the whole uh, London. Well, uh, the futuristic London. And right now it's already kind of dark. Um, yeah, so just uh, uh, briefly, in case you guys are not very familiar with this game, well, basically what you're trying to do is that you are a hacker, uh, you are going to create your own hike, uh, hacker group, so you can have form a sort of an, an elite group to take down uh, the bad guys, the corporations, the evil ones in London, that's, uh, yeah, kind of what's happening with uh, GameStop and uh, the hedge fund managers, right? So the little guys really try to kick the butts of the corporations. Now, you can very interestingly, whenever you see someone on the street, it's, 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 uh, you can like, uh, yeah, kind of hack their phones or you can shoot them if you want to. I recommend you not to because the, po the Pope will come to kick your ass. That, that's a big step from <laughs> hacking their phones to shooting. Yeah, <laughs> but you can also see like what's their individual um, like skills or you know what do they have with them or what can they bring with them. And it's so unique, like this part is so much fun. Everybody has like these kind of, uh, yeah, like this one. Irene Brown, a uh, pipe fitter, attempting to hide from operative Kenneth Green. Very, very specific. And some people have really, really funny attack lines. Will you relax a second? Mm. Let me see what this guy is like. <laughs> He's heading to Neo Gate to shop, all right? Hey, what about you, my fellow Asian boy? Joshua Lim, kitchen helper, fleeing from operative Kenneth Green. He's afraid of you. He is. <laughs> Everybody is fleeing from <laughs> Kenneth Green. But yeah, if you, if you find someone like that's going to be very interesting, like uh, either it has a very specific skill that's good for your team or for uh, operations or has very unique items, stuff like that, you can like press Q and you can save it to recruit him late or her later. What this does is that it's going to have its own little quest. So uh, whenever you want to actually recruit, uh, recruit that person, you're going to have to finish his uh, own uh, mission in order to get him or her. And then after a while you have formed a very, very formidable team uh, to take on the big guys. In the meantime, you know, I guess I'm just going to uh, drive around in some cars, I'm going to hijack uh, and uh, run over some people. Hey, that's a very beautiful, not so Tesla looking Tesla. Let's go. Um... Muntaser is asking, what's the max resolution? I see that was already answered in chat. It's indeed um, uh, 3440 times 1440 pixels. So ultra wide, wide quad HD. 
Uh, Joe now is saying I'm saving to buy an all MSI PC, uh, all MSI parts except for RAM it seems, um, and probably a processor, uh, because we don't make any processors yet, so you will need either to go to hmm, Intel or AMD for that. What do you mean yet, Michiel? It's just some secret hey, never plan say we're never. planning. Never say never. But no, I can confirm that we don't have uh, anything currently, uh, no plans currently to, to make any processors. So for that, yeah. A Intel or AMD would probably be your best bet, especially for gaming. Um... Okay, same away point. Now, so, you know, uh, if you look around, there are plenty of dark areas. Now, if you're like me and you, you know, it's of course personal preference, I mean, you don't necessarily have to do it, and you prefer to see much clearer, uh, yeah, you know, here is really where uh, night vision is going to shine. Uh, so again, when you're watching it like this, you're not going to see the difference, but when we switch to, uh, for example, the webcam view, because this is like a hardware, hardware accelerated uh, change in your uh, vision, so to speak. So, uh, for example, if I take a look at, like, this area is quite dark. And you don't like that. So then, you can... Uh, let me get, let me see if I have already activated this. Uh, oh wait, I changed it in the uh, OSD software. <clears throat> so then basically what you do is that uh, you try to use your uh, pre-configured uh, hotkey to uh, activate. Uh, for example, where is my... Uh, okay, yeah. There, there are like six hotkeys, so, you know, I <laughs> don't know them by heart yet because I just, like, pre-configured them today to show you guys. So, um, okay, 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 okay. <clears throat> so the first time you use it, it's going to uh, take a little time to uh, do this, and then once it has remembered what you do, uh, it's not going to give you uh, oh, a hard time anymore. So for example, uh, let me get this closer. If you take a look at, oh, let me see what the best angle is for this. Like this area which was very dark. Now if I switch off the night vision profile with the hotkeys, it's going to look like this. Because there's still some reflection of light which makes the screen like a little bit washed out white. Uh, so let me see if this is better. So then if I press it on again with the hotkey, you see the difference? Like even here in the shadows and this entire area where it's dark, off, on, off. So, yeah, and, you know, instead of really making everything washed out white, it's, you know, it's intelligently looking for the dar dark areas only. Uh, of course, you know, this kind of areas, it's also dark because, you know, there's shadows and stuff like that. So that's why not only the darkest areas, but every area that has like a little bit of dark tint, a shadow and stuff like that, it gets uh, intelligently uh, brightened up. So this is the difference. Now if I try to look for a different area to sh show this again. So you know, to activate this kind of feature is not a hassle at all. Uh, it's very easy because all you have to do is uh, configure a hotkey for this and then you can fully enjoy whatever it, whatever it is you're playing, whatever situation it is. And uh, let me see. So here in general, it's also not that light. And if I deactivate this, And then activate it again. Voila. See quite a difference. 
Now, of course, your uh, experience for this is going to be um, a lot better if you're uh, seeing this uh, screen in front of your eyes instead of through a webcam, right? So you guys can understand that this is not providing the best quality that we can uh, convey to you, but you get the message. So, all right, let me look for maybe the last, uh, a last spot that's looking a bit different uh, in which I can showcase this again. So let me turn this off. So say you're walking around here and again, you want to avoid this kind of dark area. So you want to see more and voila. And how strong this is, how aggressive uh, you know, the AI uh, does this, uh, it's all up to you. You can choose in the game OS the, if it's just a light touch, a medium touch, or you know, at its strongest, or just at all time that in artificial intelligence is going to decide how much, um, let's say, uh, enlightenment is going to uh, apply. So yeah, that's uh, the night vision part. Uh, you know, some people were saying beforehand, like, is this cheating? I mean, that might be a little bit far-fetched. Uh, I mean, this is uh, mainly, I think, in my opinion, more useful in titles, you know, where you have these kind of situations where dark areas uh, ca come in play, you know, a lot, many times uh, throughout your gameplay. And this uh, through, yeah, well, more or less, it's always the case with AAA title games or just you know, visually uh, good looking games and not uh, in competitive games. So, yeah, and then usually, you know, 90% of the time you're playing a single player, anyways. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's just. I a... see some comments in chat. Referee saying, I'll never let Ja drive my car. Mm -hmm. <laughs> who who I even said I want idea. to drive your car in the first place? <laughs> I mean, I don't just depends casually on what kind drive of car everybody. Is. Yeah, it depends on what kind of car you have. Yeah. Very if much. If it's a Ferrari, then, uh, <laughs> then you can talk, I think. Yes. <laughs> uh, TD Kid is asking, so the modern the Jazz is using right now is, is going to be sold as a used product? Um, no, this one will remain in our office for a while. Uh, we will use it for future live streams yeah. and stuff as well. And uh, probably within a week, it's going to disappear and magically land in my uh, living room. So, and you don't want it anyway because it got ja hamburger fingers on there. <laughs> uh, Dushan's asking, Mike, is this Artemis start of a new product line? Yes, yes. indeed. This is uh, our first model in the new Artemis product line. Um, and Artemis stands for the, the monitors with the thousand arc curvature, so really strong curvature. Cool. Um, right, I'm a comment on Periscope. Did they give out uh, codes yet? Yes, we've given away three. Uh, if you want to have a chance to win one, go to msi.com slash two slash insider to participate. Um, wow, they can shoot through windows, but I can't. Okay. Okay, so I guess I have to... Tyrant's asking, those. what's night vision mode? Uh, Final Odyssey already answered that question, that it, it indeed brightens up the darker areas instead of the complete screen. Oh, hello. I've identified a city with a um... Stickyak is asking, why don't you uh, stream the actual monitor instead of using a webcam? Right now, we're um, uh, capturing um, that we're capturing the system instead of showing through the webcam. But the night vision is done on the monitor itself, so you cannot see that um, if you're capturing the image directly from the PC, um, because it's a monitor feature and not something you you do through your PC. Um, so that's why we use a webcam to show you the difference because in, in the view we're currently using with the, with the uh, system capture There you cannot see for example the crosshair feature or the ni night vision feature or stuff like that Robert says I'm staying off the sidewalk when Jai is around <laughs> I think that's definitely a good idea. <laughs> I mean, come on, I'm not used to driving in London, right? So, you know, I get confused. Now we can see that. You're used to driving on the other side of the road, right? <laughs> <laughs> or for that matter, on the road at all. <laughs> Depends on the situation, right? Uh, Johnny, by the way, is asking, uh, what are the specs of the PC that he's playing on? Uh, well, uh, right now it's being uh, played on the ESIS TI5, which is uh, our most uh, monstrous uh, PC. It has, uh, because this is still the 10th generation uh, with uh, 10900K and uh, RDX 3080, uh, our own uh, Ventus uh, GPU. 
So, and uh, 64 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, it goes all the way up to 128. Uh, yeah, so that's what you're looking at. Uh, okay. You see what you did now? You distracted me, and now I got incapitated. Okay, but uh, yeah, so my purpose here with Watch Dogs Legion was you know, just to show you a little bit of gameplay, like how to shoot around, hack some stuff, use some spider robot, but, but most importantly is that if we switch back to the uh, webcam, just in case you missed this, we just joined. If you're playing games like this, uh, where you often have dark areas and you just want to see better, uh, you know, you, you go for the hotkey that you just made with night vision and you activate it whenever you like it and deactivate it whenever you don't feel like it. So, yeah. So that, uh, that's yeah, what night vision will do for you. <clears throat> Jono is asking, will you make MSI ice cream? I like the idea, but I don't think there's a big chance that we will do that. Uh, Dushan's asking, could we expect a bigger model, like let's say uh, 49 inches? Maybe. Well, what I can Maybe tell you not. is that uh, we will have a 38-inch model coming up. Uh, how fast? That will depend on uh, the whole crazy situation right now with uh, Corona and logistics and factories. But yeah, uh, after the 38-inch, who knows? Maybe if we see like people are really in demand of big sizes that uh, you can see a bigger size pop up the market very quick and maybe not. So maybe in the future, like it's not fine. impossible that there will also be 49. But at this point, um, we don't have 49 inch model. Wait, where is my rifle? I don't have a rifle yet? What? I see a question on YouTube. Uh, hey guys, I found out that your Trident 3 will be available with your all new RTX uh, 3060 Ti Arrow ITX. And when will it be available? Do you maybe know more about that, yeah? Uh, so, so, so the 3060 Ti Aero. Um, uh, and in the Trident 3. So the, the Trident 3 system. <laughs> uh, yes, so that one will probably be around uh, mid-April, end-April. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, assuming that everything goes well, uh, because nowadays you never know products, uh, you know, they, they get delayed uh, on a regular basis if you're unlucky. But uh, yeah, we're looking at around uh, mid-April-ish, maybe a little bit later. That's, uh, yeah, what you can expect it. Rusty Gods is asking, any recommendations for a GPU paired with a 10850K and two monitors? Very much depends on uh, what kind of first person oh, shooters yeah. you want to play on it and also what the resolution of your monitor is. Um, but in general, I would say for a 10850K, which is quite a high end CPU, I would look at, for example, a 3080 or 6800 6, XT. I know availability is limited right now. Um, but that will be the most logical combination. Nice to welcome another tough nut <laughs> to the crew. I like how they Straight just uh, casually let you switch uh, in between characters. Mid game, whatever yeah. you want. Kind of reminds me Brilliant. like uh, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where you can like randomly switch between genders <laughs> mid in the game, like in the middle of the game. Wow, I look like a uh, pink Jesus. <laughs> It's a bit like a halo, but usually it's above your head, right? Not behind. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, I don't know, I guess this is fashion in uh, Watch Dogs Legion. <laughs> Whoa. This is more I have, fashionable. Jesus. I have a MP5. Nice. I like this operator. Let's see how powerful this is. Ooh, one shot, one kill. I like that. Rusty God saying, look for two monitors as well, uh, preferably 1440p or higher. Um, well, if you're going for regular 1440p, then um, for example, 3070 would also be a nice option. If you're going for an ultra wide 1440p, then I will probably go for a little bit higher model, like the 3080 or the 6800 XT. Hi, Jack. Oh, I can't. Here comes the popo. If competitive games shot so easily with the recoil, that would be so much fun. 
Okay. Some do. <laughs> yeah, I guess uh, that's where uh, Call of Duty uh, comes in play, right? Yeah, that barely has any recoil. But also, arena shooters, for example, don't have recoil. When was the last time you actually enjoyed the arena shooters? You know, you were such a fan. Yeah, I kicked Peter's ass in the stream a while ago. You just that had to start that sentence light. with you kicked Peter's ass. And I uh, whooped Eric once in our tournament. Mm, right, <laughs> I guess, yeah, well, they both, they're both not watching this anyway, they're both busy with kids, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, so, so, yeah, um, um, <laughs> yeah, so far, uh, this is it for uh, Watchdog Legion. Uh, I hope I showed you guys... Um, you know what you know, the AI capability is whenever it comes to uh, just seeing better, seeing more details. <clears throat> and when we switch to the other one, which is very exciting. Uh, so for this one, uh, I'm going to switch to CSGO to show you guys a little bit of how uh, this is going to help you. Preferably, I would have, uh, you know, got my hands on a copy of Call of Duty as well, but didn't have time to reinstall that game because it's so huge uh, as another demo game to show you but for now CSGO will do. Any fellow, uh, fellow CSGO fans out there? So let me get to this for Now, what I'm going to do here is show you guys the optics the scope feature in which you can physically have a magnified zoomed in crosshair target area and also show you guys what it means uh, when you don't have a crosshair on your screen uh, how this will look in game when you can well magically just summon a crosshair onto your screen simple as pressing uh, pressing hotkey by the way i heard uh, last week i heard that dust 2 is apparently not the most popular counter-strike map anymore I'm not a Counter-Strike player myself, but I was surprised by that. I always thought that Dust Play was the mo Dust Two was the most popular map, but apparently now it's Mirage. Well, uh, I'm, not, I'm, I'm not sure what the official stats are saying, but uh, Dust Two is like, uh, I think by far like the most iconic map. That's for sure. But whether it's still as popular nowadays, I don't have the hard facts. But to my feeling, whenever I play, it's still very very popular but i think the reason why some people are st have stopped playing the uh, dust 2 is because it attracts a lot of hackers hackers somehow generally really like to play dust 2. so anybody who is a little bit familiar with the game knows that this is the death spot whether you're on the other side or if you're here because what happens is that every sniper will be either sniping from here to there or from there to here. Now, uh, okay, my buying period uh, expires, so let me kill myself and then buy a sniper and show you guys what I mean. Dushan and John are asking uh, about the wallpaper, by the way, that you're using on that system. Is it available for download on our website? Uh, actually, yes, because that one is where, where I got it from. So um, if you look... Uh, yeah. At the so wallpapers on our website, one, right? you should be able to find it. Yeah, that's so. One if one. you go Google uh, MSI backgrounds, uh, you should land at our uh, dedicated uh, page for yeah backgrounds, and then uh, there you can choose between categories like notebook, the monitor, uh, desktop. I believe I believe this one was from MSI brands, but. Uh, you will have to check that for yourself. But yeah, that's uh, where yeah, you Yeah, can... just look around a bit and maybe you see one that you like even more. So mm -hmm. make sure to check that. Okay, so now I'm on the other side. Now, you can already see that with CSGO, uh, for example, with any gun, you will have a crosshair. But as soon as you switch to a sniper, uh, your crosshair is gone. Right? Now, this is going to make it very hard to pre-aim uh where your enemy is because preferably you would like to be aimed at your enemy well or as close to your enemy as you like before you zoom in so there will be less distance between the target and your actual crosshair so that's why the pre-aim is very important because the more distance you create with the pre-aim the harder it is for you going to for you to hit it 
Now, it's going to be a different case if we switch to another field because I cannot show you this. Uh, well, uh, so here, if we switch to the webcam, you can see that I now do have a crosshair on my screen. So if I switch to a pistol, for example, you see so now you can be very, yeah, <laughs> it will be very easy for you to pre-aim wherever it is uh, that your enemy is going to be, and boom. And sometimes, depending on your screen size and stuff like that, the, uh, the crosshair can be a little bit off, but you can uh, change that by, for example, you see here, the actual crosshair is here in the game. This one is always the dominant one and the overlay is here, so it's not really fully aligned. So what you do then is, you go to the software, and then you click on this little button to adjust the size, or well, the position. A little bit to the left, and then a bit up. So now it's at the perfect position aligned with the game. But I don't particularly like this crosshair, so I'm gonna change this to, yeah, to this one. So Gux is asking, to more specific, when will the RTX 3060 Ti Aero RTX will be available by itself? Uh, I don't know from the top of my head, that's something uh, I would have to check with our colleague Peter, who is responsible for graphics card. Um, so not sure about that. But even when it's officially available, um, it's not really a secret that there is a huge demand for a 30 series card and that the supply is currently not on, on par with the demand. Um, so even if it is officially available, it still See, doesn't mean that so much easier now. you can already obtain one. You don't want to be walking around like this. Oh my God. Where am I looking at? I have no idea. You want to be uh, Sufjan like B is asking, is this screen G-Sync compatible? No, this is a FreeSync premium screen. Um, it's not G-Sync compatible certified, um, but of course you can switch it on in the drivers and see if it works for you. Okay, so you know, this is like the case in CSGO. If I have a sniper, you will not have a crosshair. So that makes the pre-aim hard. Now in other games, uh, for example in Call of Duty, you can also have like hardcore modes in which your uh, huts will look similarly to this, like this, except there's no health, there's no armor, and there's no nothing. But there's also no crosshair. Now I'm sure there are plenty other games in which your crosshair would disappear depending on the game mode or the weapon. For example, in Valorant, I believe it's the same case. If you're using a sniper, there is no crosshair. So, you know, stop abusing your monitor by drawing a dot uh, on the screen with a marker uh, or, you know, sticking some papers on it or anything like that. Just press a hotkey and you will get a crosshair. Like this. Ta-da! So, if it's on and I switch to our regular capture, there you cannot yep. see it. So, to your opponents, it looks like this. Or even to the game, it looks like this, what you're seeing right now. But what I'm seeing is a big ass crosshair on the screen. Okay, maybe red was a better color. So let's go for red. You know, makes the sniping life a lot easier. Let's hit a flick. Oh, he blocked it. <laughs> you hit your teammate, I think. Yep. <laughs> <clears throat> okay, so something else I want to show you, uh, which is uh, really one of a kind, <laughs> and that's make a lot of people very pissed off standing on the other side. Now, anybody with a little bit of experience with this game or this map knows that this is the spot where ambitious amp alpers or snipers are going to challenge the T-spawn sniper counterpart which is standing right there, or here, somewhere. Now, you only can zoom in so much with the sniper, once, twice, and that's it. 
So if you take a look at this little tri well, uh, square thingy, you can see this is only this big, right? Now, it looks like Eric has entered the chat, by the way. <laughs> it says, I see Josh cheating again. What's new? Ha -ha. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why you hired me, right? I play smart, not hard. <laughs> so now, because I showed you earlier, right, in the GameUSD app, you can also hotkey uh, this optics scope. Uh, feature so you don't have to reach for the uh, OSD anytime or each time you need it. So uh, just for the sake of the uh, of the demonstration, let me turn off the uh, crosshair and then start from zero with the zoom. So now you want to use the optiscope um, option, but uh, I forgot where I put the or you know which. Oh, Whoops. I need to look up the hotkey again because I forgot which one it was. <clears throat> so let's see. Here in options, you go to hotkeys and you can see optics scope. Can you drag it to the center a little bit? Oh, uh, uh, yes. There we go. So, voila, this is the hard key, uh, shift, control, out, and down. <clears throat> now in the Game OSD app, regularly, this will look like this. So, uh, you can test this out, test it, uh, test it out, like whatever you, it is you like best. Like if you like small and only times 1.5 uh, so magnified by 1.5 um, then choose for this and see how it looks like so this is what it looks like when it's off now take a look at this uh, square thingy right you see that it's very small now if I activate the optic scope, you can see it suddenly became 1.5 times bigger. Actually, anything in this square, the target focus area, is magnified by 1.5 times. Now, imagine that your enemy is seeing you at the same distance, but you are 1.5 times smaller than him. So it is for him then 1.5 times harder to hit you because your, uh, your field model is sim uh, simply smaller and his fuel model or the target model is simply bigger for you to hit uh, okay let me uh, reset the game I didn't even know there was a limit to the game but uh, okay so that's like the smallest uh, square and the smallest magnification of the optic scope if you want to go even more hardcore to make it even more easy for yourself to you know practically just put the put him at easy uh, you'll be going to do this you'll go do this let me go to here again now go to the OSD app now okay let me turn this off so now we go for medium and we go for two times no let's screw it let's go for four times all right so let's see what happens we uh, simply hotkey this so like I said you know you don't have to go into the OSD app every time just press the hotkey Right, holy Jesus. You see how big this okay. square became? That's, that's a big difference. <laughs> I think this would be too much. I, I'm not sure if it would still make it helpful mm -hmm. now. See, I think it used that, to be this big. And then yeah. it becomes this big. I mean, at the beginning... I think an option in between would be more helpful. Yeah, so I mean, uh, definitely at the beginning, it will take a little bit used to for you to like get used to the magnification. But once you get used to it, you'll be a god. So <laughs> let's see what happens when we go for the middle way. So where is it? Okay, two times magnification. So now we have the medium square with two times magnification. Let's switch between the area. 
So again, let's see. Normally he's this big, but now he becomes this big. Twice big, twice as big. So let me switch an area, which is another popular spot whenever you want to stop people from rushing long, which is this side, to plant the bomb here. You, as a sniper, will usually be holding this angle or standing here, holding this angle, killing everyone that's gonna come across your path. Now, it's going to be very helpful if what you're seeing is actually bigger, so it will be easier for you to hit. So what do you do? You don't cheat, you simply turn on the assistance to make it bigger. Now, just look at this pole. So imagine this pole's width is uh, the target enemy's body, so this big. Now, once he comes into your scope, he becomes twice as big. So you have twice as many area or pixels to hit. That's how this works. <clears throat> so you see they're there, and you just simply zoom in, and you'll be like, oh no, where's my crosshair, you know? My crosshair is gone because I have a sniper. Don't worry, fix that right up. Voila, there you have a sniper and crosshair. So you'll be watching that area with your crosshair, zoom in, hit whatever it is that comes in your path. And this, uh, yeah, it works for every scenario, to, well, to your own liking, of course, but you will get the most benefit out of this at the longest distance. So, of course, the longer the distance, the smaller the fuel model is going to be, so the smaller your target area is. Now, you can make this bigger by simply using the hotkey and make your life a lot easier and hit shots a lot better. Brian is asking, okay, is this legal for competitive play on a, on a tournament? No. I would say it's not. Um, is it detectable? No. no. Because it's on the monitor, it's not a program on your exactly. PC. Exactly. So That's also why in the capture you cannot see it, and with a camera you can. Yeah. So even if they have like software that's going to scan for this kind of stuff, they cannot detect it because you're not doing anything, uh, you know, software-wise to your screen. This is like a But like for example, overlay. if you're on a on a Counter Strike tournament, I, I don't think they will allow. Yeah. So this is what you what what is actually happening. What software can see, but what actually is happening to your eyes is. Boom. Now don't mind the screen. Of course, it's being captured by a webcam, but just trying to show you clearer how this all looks like. So, and then you're tired of the optic scope, you just be like, hit the hotkey, turn it off, and go on with your life. Um, I see a question on YouTube, when will the Oculus NXG 253R release? It's, that one's going to be released uh, beginning of uh, April. So we know that we, quite, quite yeah, we know that uh, that model has been uh, delayed quite a few times already, but uh, that's unfortunately out uh, out of our control. So we're hoping to uh, get that one ready. It should be ready uh, around uh, beginning to mid April. <laughs> Robert is saying. So what you are saying is it is cheating. It depends on who you ask. I think it is. Jeff thinks it isn't. I mean, so it's, I mean, it's open yeah, for because, debate. I mean, it's it's <laughs> it's not like it's cheating because this is readily and uh, legally available to everybody, right? So if you want to use this, you can. <laughs> yeah. So so is an aimbot, in my opinion. But yeah. Yeah, but 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 the aimbot <laughs> is not legally available, right? And yeah, but this is this legal? Is, which? But when is something legally available? I think if a shop can sell it, it's legally available. So if a shop sells an aimbot, yes. then it's legal yes. to use. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah. This is a gray area, I would say. Some people consider it as cheating, including me. Some people don't, including Ja. Um, so yeah, it's if it's ethical, it's maybe more of that question than whether or not it's legal. Um, so you have to decide for yourself whether or not you want to use it. <laughs> 
Yeah, and it will indeed. Uh, cost also refers to like the terms and conditions of games. Uh, it will depend per game um, whether or not it's allowed through the terms and conditions. Um, but for sure, in, in competitive tournaments, uh, like competitive CSGO and stuff like that, uh, I highly doubt if it's allowed there. So if you want to play competitively, I would not recommend using it because if you're used to it, then you maybe get dependent on it. Uh, and I don't think you can use it in tournaments. <clears throat> All right. So, um, yeah, that kind of concludes the uh, optic scope uh, story. So, uh, again, you, it's, it's not uh, bound to a game. You can use it whenever it is you like, even if you're not playing a game, because this is pu that's purely bound to your monitor hardware-wise. So you can use it anytime you want, whenever you want, with whatever you want. Um, yeah, simply bind it to a hotkey, uh, you have a good time activating and deactivating it. And yeah, that's more or less it. And I'll leave it up to you as to what you think. Would you like to use this kind of feature in specific situations? And yeah, of course, the gray area of is this cheating? I think we're just gonna be a little bit positive about it and be like, it's a positive assistance. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, I'll put this back. Ja, do you know what time it is? I think it is time to make many, many people happy because I think we're about to end the live stream. And uh, so we'll just wait a little bit for you guys to comment and answer and maybe ask some questions before uh, we end the stream. And perhaps we can even draw two winners. Hmm, how are we feeling? That sounds like a plan. So I will just already draw the can. first winner now. And uh, for the people who haven't participated yet, you will still get a chance. So if you go to msi.com yeah. slash two it's slash insider right now like and you sign up for the giveaway, then you will still be uh, included in the last drawing. So this is your last chance chance to sign up. Uh, and the winner will, of course, get a game code for Watch Dogs Legion. So our next winner of a Watch Dogs Legion game code is, ooh, difficult name. Say Samini Me Table. Congratulations! I'm sorry for totally borking up your name, but you also won a game code for Watch Dogs Legion. So Samini Me Table. Congratulations! <laughs> you tried. <laughs> I tried. I tried. And. See a uh, TD kid in Twitch is saying, "Ja, you said the monitor is going to mysteriously disappear within a week. So how do you think it's going to happen?" Mm, probably. Well, probably when Ja is walking out of the office, he's like two times his width. Yeah, uh, probably going to <laughs> under, involve some <laughs> vehicle jacket. to uh, carry it. So yeah. Yeah, guys, uh, come on. Um, so if you still have any questions, please drop them in the chat now. Uh, we can still attend to them. And uh, I think Mikhail is still... Uh, wait, wait, did you draw two already or was it just one? No, I did one. So people still have ah, the, the okay, opportunity okay, okay. to sign up yeah. if they haven't done so. So we're still yet. going to draw one more. So the last one of today. I'll wait for one more minute and then you need to be signed up. Uh, Action Brother is asking, can I ask something about the uh, MAG274 yeah, sure. uh, QRFQD? Yes, of course. Um, Marvin wants to know when the Artemis will be released in Germany. Uh, I don't know for individual re regions, but yeah, when is the general release date for this uh, one? In Germany, it should be quite a good situation because you're very close to our uh, logistics hub. Um, so you should be expecting this like somewhere in like next week uh, until mid-February. So, so in the coming yeah. weeks? It should in the be coming week or job. max two. 
but of course and best to check with it with your local yeah. reseller um, because it can of course depend from shop to shop when it will be available um, so for more detailed information always check at the shop where you want to buy it and they should be give be able to give you more information about that Uh, Quincy saying, I recently bought uh, MAG342 CQR. Notice there's flickering problems with G-Sync, even though it uses adaptive sync. Uh, is that an official, official G-Sync compatible monitor? Jeremy, no, that's you know, not that a uh, G-Sync compatible monitor. So yeah, then it, then it's always the risk uh, yeah. of um, does it work? Yes or no? If it's not an official G-Sync compatible monitor, it does not always work 100% uh, fine. In some situations, you're lucky. Sometimes you're unlucky. And then you can, for example, experience flickering issues. OK, time for our last giveaway of today to close the stream off. In the meanwhile, I will open this slide about next week. So Ja, what are we going to do next week? <laughs> well, next week, uh, we're going to have something that's going to be very light in weight but very hard and heavy when it hits so i think peter is going to uh get you guys very familiar with our uh, newest gaming mouse which is a very very lightweight and tailor made for competitive games and of course you can play it for more stuff but going to be a lot Ultra of good light stuff. gaming yes, mouse. very very light. So really good for competitive gaming for titles like csgo stuff like that so make sure to tune in next week, the same place, same time. And now I have our last winner for today. Congratulations, Mike underscore P. You also won a game code for Watch Dogs Legion. Um, we will email the code to you in the coming days with some instructions on how to claim it. So keep an eye out on your mailbox. Also to the, to the other winners, um, check your email because in the coming days you will get your yeah. game code. Congratulations, Congratulations to man. all winners. If you didn't win this time, Make sure to tune in next time. We will, of course, have a new giveaway, so you will have new chances to win. Um, and if you join today, and we'll join next week, uh, and if you didn't have it yet today, then next week you will, you will also have your loyalty bonus for a slightly increased chance of winning. So make sure to join next week during our Clutch yeah. GM. And just before we go off, uh, Action Brother, uh, I'm pretty, pretty, pretty uh, positive it's 1.4. So, all right. And uh, see you guys next week. And have a very good yeah. day. Stay safe. Keep your distance. And ciao, ciao. Hope to see you next Thank week. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.